Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. All right, time to get started with Bassmaster Live, third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Guaranteed Rate. Bassmaster Elite at legendary Santee Cooper Lakes. We got a little taste yesterday of the Kokori that has been Santee Cooper all through these years. Maybe hearkening back to 16 years ago when all the records were shattered. Mark Zona, that was a taste that tasted pretty good. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. It was a St. Paddy's Day snippet yesterday, but you might want to hang on for what we're going to see today, potentially. Talking to a lot of the guys that we have cameras in the boats with, they said, oh, Oh, there's a lot more coming. Conditions absolutely perfect here on Friday. Well, you see our rules of the game there right there. Of course, the full field, 94 anglers fishing again today, but only 47 will survive the cut until day number three. A lot, a lot on these guys' minds today. It's been, as you put it yesterday, Mark Zona, the haves and the have-nots. But boy, we have got a knot of players below the top six. The top six are a little bit separated, but below that, as we take a look at our unofficial leaderboard, well, our official leaderboard from yesterday, boy, the top six have separated themselves. Below that, it is a tangle of, of folks. Exactly right. And we actually opened up yesterday on day one here on Santee Cooper Lakes and said this was going to be a top-heavy event. Well, that is exactly what transpired. If you're going to have a camera in your boat today, you needed to have over 26 pounds, almost 22 pounds, just to crack into our top 10. And here's the great thing. A lot of our leaders, really at the top of the leaderboard, they quit fishing at about noon yesterday. Taking a look at our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake, Santee Cooper Lakes, Lake Moultrie, Lake Marion, really, the predominant player, like the last time we were here, Lake Marion. A lot of your leaders fishing throughout Lake Marion and fishing around each other. And today, we will be able to break that down. Lake Marion, about 110,000 acres. Lake Moultrie, a little bit smaller, more round, kind of a Lake Okeechobee-style lake. About 60,000 acres right there. That is your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. Let's get out to Caleb Kufal starting this day in second place. A fantastic day yesterday, including one giant in the live well. And Caleb Kufal, a winner last year at Lake Dunnersville. Oh, they might keep. Fell off. Right at the boat. Hopefully it's a 14 incher. We're on the board. Early. He's sticking to the game plan. That's what put him forward in several tournaments throughout his career. Exactly right, and get used to this area right here. Potato Creek was a player in our fall event here a year and a half ago with this man right here that won that tournament, Brandon Polinick. Really, your only angler fishing offshore in your top six. Good sign. Nope, they're going to this side. Come on. Come on. Oh, gosh. I got him. Oh. <laughs> it's not giant, but. A good start. I went to grab him in the mouth and realized he had a mouthful of treble hooks. 
Not a bad start for day number two. Three and a half pounder. Shh! <laughs> Trying to be quiet, man. I mean, I love people cheering, but we don't want to give it away. Keeper number one right there for Brandon Polinick. Notice he said, kind of want to stay quiet. Reason why is there were some other anglers in that area inside of Polinick that are at the top of your leaderboard. And yesterday morning, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, Tommy Sanders. Yesterday morning in the first 20 minutes, Brandon Polinick catching three bass off of his front facing sonar is mega live on a jerk bait. And we said those three bats were probably right around uh, close to say 17 pounds just for those first three bites. But here's the thing. It looked a lot better on paper with Brandon Polinick yesterday, really throughout the entire day. This one here about mid morning on a jig offshore. Brandon Polinick really only had about eight bites all day long. Definitely a good stringer on the scale with 26.2. The majority of his fish are coming on a suspended jerk bait. And we'll start to dial that in a lot more as this day goes on. So few bites for the remainder of the day, but he never never phased him. That's kind of the expectation here at Santa yes. Cooper in many, many cases. Yeah, and you could definitely tell a lot of the fish, you know, he was concentrating 5 to 15 feet of water throughout practice when it was colder, and he saw, got to see a lot more fish out in that zone. Well, we got one bite. It wasn't the big, big ones, but it was a good start. But things are definitely changing. They're not, uh, I was hoping they were going to reload more than what they are. They don't seem to be reloading on some of this offshore stuff as much. Um, but, you know, maybe we come back here later this afternoon and they are pulled up on it. it can be a timing deal. Yesterday, we might have just happened to hit it at the right time. But we're going to keep with it for a while. Obviously, we've got way different conditions today. There's no cloud cover. There's bright bluebird skies. That should change things a little bit. We may have to change with it. I would... Let's take it from Brandon Game Pollard, plan. over to third place Greg Hackney to start this day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Greg Hackney is going to be a handful in this tournament, probably the best cypress tree fisherman on planet Earth. And you're going to see a lot of this with Hackney. And he really dialed in yesterday. Another one of the anglers that said he was done by noon. Big one. Number one. much all of Hackney's damage yesterday on a Strike King Rage Bug. And really, if you kind of watch how Hackney attacks this time of year, taking a look at that Strike King Rage Bug, all of the baits you're going to really see today, small creature baits, Bass Pro Shop's top lures are going to some way, shape, or form, Tommy. They're going to resemble, I mean, a lot of people think that's a crawdad. A lot of these guys are trying to mimic little bluegill around these cypress trees. And the biggest key Looking at that Strike King Rage Bug right there for Hackney. Very, very lightweight. A 316 sounds weight where it will kind of glide around these cypress trees. Every bass he caught yesterday, that bait right there. Bass Pro Shops, Top Lure, Strike King Rage Bug. Okay. Well, you know, I'm basically just fishing for bedding fish that I can't see. You know, 
And uh, I thought I was getting some fish to bite, you know, in practice that were, you know, they weren't bedding fish, they were actually deeper. And uh, yesterday I ended up catching them a lot shallower and on places that I didn't get bit in practice, but it makes me think they moved up there and started, uh, you know, started spawning. So today I feel like we will stay relatively shallow, you know, they seem to be more channel and deeper tree oriented in practice. And then, of course, I kind of anticipated that, you know, water in practice in here was maybe 55 in the mornings. And like this morning, it's starting almost at 60. And it was like 63 when I left yesterday, so. Love is in the air. It is most definitely springtime. The calendar says not till this weekend, but everything, everything has that feel about it. Absolutely, Tommy. And the one thing to watch where Hackney's at today, we covered a lot of people in that region yesterday. It's not like you just roll into that zone and catch 20 to 30 pounds. Guys like Greg Hackney saw another angler in there make a big comeback yesterday, Carl Jacobson. It's going to be very interesting to watch the specific cypress trees that Hackney concentrates throughout the day because a lot of his damage yesterday was in a 100-yard stretch. Almost 28 pounds yesterday for Greg Hackney. You heard him say he's uh, fishing for spawners that he can't see. Probably a different story, but we're going to get filled in on that today with this angler right here, very talented, and how about 31 Almost 32 pounds yesterday. Sure. For Drew, <laughs> look at that thing at the way in. That is just outrageous. Exactly. And Drew Cook doing something very specific. And I asked him, I said, Drew, do you have some left that you laid your eyes in? He said, oh, yeah. You don't need to worry about that. I've got a six and a seven that I left alone at the end of the day. Mm. Looks like he's posted up on one right now. Drew Cook live. Yeah, so uh, I was easing up here to where I marked a female yesterday, and uh, actually, there's one right here. I'm a little too close to it. Um, I thought she was gonna bite on like the first flip, because she she rolled around on it. She was swimming through the bed, and I started shaking it, and she rolled around on it real quick. And uh, now it kind of seems like. I am too close, but the sun's fixing to be up enough to where I can see a lot further away. And uh, it should be able to make it where I can catch them faster from further away. Not spook him. Very slow, meticulous with Greg Hackney. I'm gonna tell you that look away that you just got right there, Tommy Sanders. It was almost like he was staring you down at a classic banquet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, worried <laughs> yeah, about the is. hall monitor. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you, sir.
gotta be a cut in that line. Ain't no way it's not. That's crazy. I mean, the way he was, you know, wrapped around that deal, I was just holding him. I knew he wasn't big, but I couldn't pull him out, so. another thing with Hackney using a darker color rage bug early in the morning but again his biggest key he said this time of year when he is in here for us to spend the day fishing so let's keep pot both of those fish I caught were males yep He said they know when he knows they are locked on, but he can't see them. That weight is the biggest key. A 316 sounds tungsten weight. under 27 pounds yesterday for a two-time classic champion Hank Cherry. Yeah, and that stretch right there, there was a ton of big ones trying to spawn, trying to spawn on the What's same that? beds. Well, the update is we just got down here not too long ago, and the sun is bright, but I can't see a thing. It's shady. Yesterday I had clouds, so there was really no glare. So the sun's gonna have to get up to where I can really see what I'm looking for. Um, I'm just fan casting a worm around right now. It's just, just a five inch Berkeley General. Uh, just, you know, catch a cruiser or throw it on top of one, just fishing a little bit. Hoping, uh, once it lightens up, I'm going to be able to see them and give it a good four hours. If I can't see them, then we will go up the river and go fishing. But I think I think once the light comes out, I'll be able to see some. Um, I know there's one over there behind us that we that I goofed up yesterday that I'm going to catch eventually. I'm just going to take my time and enjoy being out here. Hope the camera ain't a jinx today. <laughs> Get back to Hagney, Toothfish, and his boat. to really watch when he catches a male, how he'll lock in and absolutely dissect a certain cypress tree. That's a rough looking fish. Dang. He's wild as well can get him. I mean, nasty looking. Okay. Well, it's just liven up the party, man. <laughs> I was hoping that was a big one. I could see it when I stuck it. 
I'm retying this time regardless if it's got a cut in it or not. I can't take another chance. <laughs> I was worried about it then. But I felt of it and felt of it, and I'm like, man. Yeah. So I got a, uh, that's my 7 6 uh, Hackney Pitching Signature Series Lose Pitching Stick. 8 3 to 1. No, no. That's a 9 5 to 1 Hyper Speed Lose Reel. 20 pound gamma fluorocarbon. Uh, 5 out hook. And a Strike King Tungsten weight. Tour grade weight. And I'm using a Rage Bug. Now, I, yesterday, because I didn't come in here with a loader, after the sun came up, I was using a lighter color. This morning, I'm using June Bug just because it's dark. I want to make sure they see it, you know, because it's, you know what I mean, the sun hadn't got up on any of this yet, so. And the June Bug seems to be working. <laughs> but they're all males. You know, I've caught three here in the last few minutes, and they're all males. So I'm one fish away from, we're going to get to fish tomorrow. <laughs> that happened, that escalated quickly. I didn't know how fast I'd get a bite, but it's been quite fun so far. Boy, if you really, really Keep your eye on Greg Hackney. This one right here is a fastball down the middle, the way these fish are set up. Exactly how he grew up in Arkansas, fishing the old coal pile, Cane Creek, the southeast corner of Arkansas, absolutely identical to this in very, very small irregularities that you'll hear Greg Hackney talk about throughout this day that kind of makes these key stretches. You're gonna watch a show with Hackney here on day number two. Z Skeeter Boats, BFA, big fish alert. Gray Hanselman, a seven pounder. Had 19 pounds yesterday, he's up in our top 10 with that seven pounder. All right, starting to happen out there. You saw some of the guys complain, but not, not quite, but different light conditions this morning. Gonna change their schedule a little bit. And there's your leaderboard with Greg Hackney now on top. Three fish in the boat. You heard him say, one more, and I'm fishing tomorrow. That's what today is all about. Make it I think he's safe. 47. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So plenty more to come. We're just getting a taste of what's going to happen today. A very different day on Santee Cooper. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Hummingbird. Mercury. Nitro Boats. And by Best Pro Shops. TGIF from the Santee Cooper Lakes, and Friday means moving day on the Bassmaster Elite Series. It's just guaranteed rate. Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is no different. We've got the full field of 94 out there and only 47 slots available. Greg Hackney, six-time Bassmaster winner, has risen to the top of that leaderboard unofficially as we look at it right now. Yeah, exactly right, Greg Hackney. I think it's pretty safe to say, as we said, we were going to commercial break. Greg Hackney is going to be fishing on semifinal Saturday tomorrow, and really, a lot of your leaders right now we can kind of dial in. Lake Marion, the biggest player, and Greg Hackney made the comment, which is fun for all of us on TGIF, said he is going to burn that area down today. So screw up there. That was almost a screw up right there. I think we'll 
push him more. Let me put her in that other side again. Funny how the fish will get me live every time. I'd be happy with four more just like it. I'm not re overly greedy. What I'd really like to have was four of them and like personal best. <laughs> I mean, if we were gonna, you know. I really like to catch big ones with not much line out. It's fun when it's up personal, you know. I like a fight. Oh, he is feeling it today. See, that's how we get his bass track weights uh, when we don't have a camera on him, because that bass time, he was not three. In fact, I kind of lit him up last night because he had uh, on bass track 18 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Only he said, "Man, eight pounds I, off. I mean, come on, you know, I, that's eight pounds." I just, I just, I, I small item all day, guys. I don't know. I put them in the live well too fast. Yeah. Eight pounds is just one fish. I mean, it seems. You know. Hey, really, really watch what he does in the mornings. I've been lucky enough to do this many times with him. He is absolutely adamant in the mornings using a dark color soft plastic or a jig when he's and now you're going to see a jig with him at some time today really really dark colors in the morning and as the day wears on is when he gets to a lot more natural colors but he feels like those dark color soft plastics or jigs are critical hurry, in low light conditions do this or i'll be on that trail of tears here in a minute you know what i mean so I'm Seems like every one of them this morning has got me around, you know, got me around something. So I just. But the deal was with her, I was watching another fish move the water. And I was like, there's one right around the, the deal. And she had it. But that wasn't a fish that, uh, oh, what did I do? The fish I was looking at was 10 foot from where that one was, you know, but I'm fishing and watching and it was stuck. And I was like, lucky she didn't come off. But she didn't. Lots of important mm -hmm. point races going on. This is the third stop of the year out of nine stops, so this is kind of a landmark. Third of the year done when we finish here at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Let's look at our Falcon Bassmaster Rookie of the Year watch right there in Masayuki Matsushita. The man on top by a slim margin over Jay Shakura. Jay Shakura just spent a lot of time atop that yes. during the course of this day, uh, course of this year. And Joseph Webster. Checking in at third place right there, a little farther back. Douglas and all the rest. As a matter of fact, though, let's go. E and W Trailer Hitch is live on the line. Some bonus coverage with Joseph Webster having an excellent tournament right here. And Joseph, I, I hope you can hear us and talk a little bit about how today is different from yesterday and what were the keys for you yesterday. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, 
We're going to move on from there. Tommy BMW trailer hitches on the line. That is a spotty area of Santee Cooper lakes right there, but it's an area we've got some of our leaders in just kind of watch Joseph Webster right now. Try again with Joseph. I definitely want to have a couple of words with that young man doing. <gasps> Absolutely. Almost where he wants to be in this season right now. Yes. Yeah. Almost. Absolutely. There. We're going to head back over to Potato Creek right now with your day one leader, Drew Cook. Good, good look at the most critical factor that Drew Cook told us yesterday was lily pads. Every single big one, looking at this hummingbird bird's eye view. He said pads were key, did not matter what size they were, but lily pads in spawning bays were a lot of your anglers yesterday that are atop the leaderboard concentrating on hard cover, not the case for Drew Cook. And the other thing, Drew Cook, a lot like Greg Hackney said, he's going to probably try to burn this area down today for the simple fact there was a lot of company Tata Creek yesterday. But now she's kind of getting a little sideways on me. She's right here at the boat now. You see her? She's right up against these pads. Swimming through that nice sandy spot now. Everything Cook caught yesterday. Uh Usual staple with Drew Cook, a big bite bait, fighting frog, color tilapia magic, lightweight, like hackney, small quarter ounce tungsten weight. Which is pretty much ev every time we see him sight fishing, that's about all he uses. Terrific bird's eye view right there. Really you, is. You get a feel for the depth, you get a feel for the cover, everything. It's just tells a lot yep. of the story. Perfect hard bottom. Drew Cook in his fourth year with the Bassmaster Elite Series. Never been out of the top 20 in Angler of the Year points during that time. And three of the four years, he's been in the top 10 as he is right now. Uh -oh. Here's a big fish coming in here. Skeeter Boats, Clifford Perch in 8-4. Get him in our top 10 from 37th place. Man. Really, it's amazing how a lot of your leaders were in very condensed areas of Lake Mary, and it was not spread out. And one of the other things that we actually opened, Bassmaster Live, which was a major player up in the swamp, the stump hole on the top end of Lake Mary, and that was a big player a year and a half ago. With all of the rain that came through on Tuesday and Wednesday, Man, a lot of our anglers that gambled going up there where it's been so consistent, especially earlier in practice, they got burned bad. A lot of that area was really blown out the entire day. Zay, did you see the uh, weather forecast shifted tomorrow in the middle of the day? There's some uh, storms expected, some scattered thunderstorms and some powerful thunderstorms. Yes. Yes, that's uh, something we actually talked about yesterday, and it's going to be taking a look at our TH Marine weather watch here. Today is pretty <laughs> about as prime as it gets. Drew Cook said, with weather like this, you know more are coming. No matter if you burn an area, you're going to have to recheck it. Tomorrow is definitely the one to keep your eye on. We're supposed to have a lot of sun today and not the case tomorrow. Temps are going to be fine, but thunderstorms and the biggest thing 
we're going to have a pretty good blow coming from the south southwest really 15 to 25 miles per hour which i think you're going to see a lot more fishing tomorrow instead of looking And you're coming in on the look at Drew Cook here. Very interesting. Him getting set up. He and uh, Hank Cherry mentioned, both of those guys mentioned this morning that the sun's got to have to get a little higher, get the glare off the water, and they could really go to work right then. Welcome to Bassmaster Live. We just finished the first hour of fishing with our 94 anglers out there today. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios. Sponsored by Marathon, Tommy Sanders, Mike Such, Sukon, and of course Mark Zona in the mix right there. And Z, we talk about a, a different day tomorrow, different weather conditions. I think we'll have it all. If the guys in Potato Creek, the guys in Jack's Creek, are, are they going to get protection from the wind? It would seem like those are traditionally the places where guys go to get out of the wind. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And really, it's going to, the thing to, to watch today is how long these anglers stay in these areas. You know, really, you're, you, you can't stress this enough. A lot of your leaders, except for Polinick, they were done, Tommy. They were done at 11 or, or 12 o'clock yesterday and tried to expand on, on a lot of what they were doing. And it'll be interesting to see, at least today, how many guys just lock into sight fishing. Today is going to be a phenomenal sight fishing day, and there's probably going to be a lot of local traffic in those areas, too, because we did hear there was a lot of that yesterday. So it, basically what we're going to watch today is how long do these anglers stay in these areas where they throttled them yesterday? And Such, uh, speaking of traffic, you're going to be handling a lot of big fish alert traffic today. We just had the Cliff Perch yeah, 84. I... What's the big fish so far in the tournament? Todd Ons. Todd Ons, 815 yesterday. We had two eight, uh, what was that, sevens yesterday by Taco Ito and Caleb Kufal. And now uh, Perch is 84 today. Starting off the big hit parade. Well, that's why we come to the Santee Cooper Lake. Some good stuff going on out there. Let's get back out on the water right now. Greg Hackney with four in the boat. Good, we'll go catch that one too. Brandon Pollock this time yesterday had four in the boat. Not, not the same story today. If you really look at those four, the way each one of them is fishing, you can't stress it enough. Every one of them doing what's their wheelhouse is the best way to describe it. Did you say that, Tommy? Brian New is 615. Man, always watch out for Brian New. Oh, that he's, yesterday he did. he's not scared to come from behind all no, tournament long. He made the comment, just wants to kind of wait in the weeds, Tommy Sanders. All right, affirmative, affirmative. We've got plenty more on the way. Just yes, sir. Our first hour of fishing. Seven more hours to go for our full field out there on the Santee Cooper Lakes. All right now on top of the leaderboard, it is one Greg Hackney. We'll be right back. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. The Santee Cooper Lakes, Marion, and Moultrie. Get back out on the water. There's our leader, Greg Hackney. Number one. First fish of the day for him, Caleb Cooper. Fish similar. They might keep. At the moment. Puts one in the boat. Oh, gosh. I got it. Oh. Brandon the brand of the most recent winner here in 2020. Yeah, good morning of fish catching so far with Greg Hackney and Tommy. One thing to definitely watch this morning, now that our anglers have spread out, all of our anglers, here's what's interesting. We're going to get, get back out to Greg Hackney. North of him, up in the swamp where we talked about it was blown out from all of that rain. Well, yesterday, 20% of our field was fishing up there. Today, there are three boats, which has put a lot of those anglers that struggled up there yesterday around a lot of the areas where our leaders are. Today, it's going to be a lot more crowded than we saw on day number one. You know, the, the way I'm fishing, like normally, if you were fishing for, you know, 
fishing fish, I'd be fishing the tree, but I'm really not doing that. I'm trying to fish the openings between that stuff. Those beds, because I know from seeing them, they're not tight up there against the tree. They're out away from it that far, yeah. Say that again. Most of the ones I see, you know, they're that big around. So I'm just looking for openings around that stuff where, you know, so like I pitch right there, I feel those, some of these trees have those, you can see some of them growing on that little tree, have real fuzzy roots. I have more confidence around the edge of the root than the tree. So when I pitch up there and I feel that root, I just keep fishing out till it gets clean. And then I go to fishing. Cause that fish will be in the clean, you know. Now, because there's that situation, those females, a lot of times that bed will be like right there where I threw and she'll be sitting on the tree, especially in the morning. She won't get on the bed till later in the day, you know, when it warms up more, since it's still cooler. So I'm having to fish for both, you know what I mean? Like the fish that I think are sitting there and then the... Gosh, he is interesting to listen to how dialed he is in this style of fishing when he knows a bass is spawning not actually looking at the beds the vmc on point this morning with greg acne and he said there are key 50 to 100 yard stretches where these males are setting up shallow we'll talk about the kind of trees and the kind of bank that he said is the most critical you notice really everything Hackney has caught so far this morning. Solid males, really two and a half to three and a quarter pound males. VMC on point. His beta strike king rage bug, color June bug in the morning, going to a more natural watermelon later in the day. Biggest key, 316 sounds, tungsten weight. That one right there, Hackney's biggest of the day, VMC on point, Gray Hackney already doing damage on Lake Marion. Oh. And well, that was almost the one thing he said about that weight, it le lets the bait glide to make it look like a bluegill kind of intruding through those bedding areas. Greg Hackney slinking around like a little sewer possum all day long so far. VMC on point, Greg Hackney. Drew Cook, our only angler to start the day, over 30 pounds, still waiting for his first keeper today. First visibility to improve for him, get the glare off the water, the sun up high. Cook was the rookie of the year back in 2018. His progressive angler of the year point status every season has been pretty much sterling. Yes. Commendable. One of the things with Drew Cook in practice, he said he fished on Sunday when it was really, really bitter cold. And all he did Monday and Tuesday was look. Never made a cast Monday and Tuesday. And something for, you know, a lot of folks that, you know, if you like sight fishing and stuff like that, a lot of what he found locked on yesterday, as far as the females, he said those females were cruising on Tuesday and he would just drop a waypoint. They were not locked on Tuesday. And when he would come back to these areas, you know, he might see them 
you know, on a root ball or a log, he would come back to these areas and they 90% of those big females that he saw Tuesday were locked on on day one of this tournament where they had not been on Tuesday. Another thing with Hackney on Sunday when the when the air temps were 25 to 27 degrees and so many anglers, we talked about it yesterday, Tommy, so many anglers had a brutal, brutal Sunday of practice with as cold as it was. Hackney said, no, I had really 25 to 30 bites on Sunday. And he said he really feels that these fish on this lake are used to cold fronts compared to a, a, a Florida bass. David Fritz making a little noise this morning. Yesterday he had one fish down in the 70s. Today he's got a 6-0 at 814 and now a 7-0. He's up to 13 pounds. Wow. And he's inside the cut right now at 39th, but it's early, early, early. But he's uh, on the way to making a big bag. I think most of the speculation, you got him about 32, 33 pounds to make that cut today. Is that yeah. not right? Something close to that. It started with... Uh, Gus, Gussie at 15.13, so Z is going to be double that. That's 32. You're going to add another pound of that or even more for the cut? I would say today, yeah, I would say you're going to probably 33-pound range. There's 16 guys within a pound of the cut starting this morning. Yeah, it's a big traffic jam there. Yeah, and Fritz was one of those anglers that we kind of kept our eye on him yesterday. He was he was up in the swamp, and he's not there today. So a lot of the areas where guys throttled him, basically from mid-lake on Marion down towards the dam, going to have a lot more boats in there, a lot more pressure today than they, had, that they got to see yesterday. Let me ask you, you talked about that migration out of the swamp. These guys falling in where other anglers are. This is one place where you hear uh, more than a few anglers and even commentators say, this is a place you want to be fishing around other people. What do they mean by that? Yeah, yeah. and, and Christy was one of those. Christy do not like to be around other anglers. He's just the way he is mm -hmm. <laughs> on the water. And he said, man, I feel like not, you know, he's he, we talked about it on day one of Bassmaster Live. He said, this place is a lot like Florida. And you can even throw a Lake St. Clair in there. If you're not around other fishermen, you're not around a population of bass, you know, and, and Christy was not around a lot of other anglers yesterday and he struggled. He caught one bass yeah. to where if, if you look today with a lot of the guys that had over 20 pounds, in fact, 25 pounds, they were around a lot of other competitors this man included Drew Cook, Greg Hackney, Brandon Polinick. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of other company in the areas, and we're seeing that exact thing here today. Drew Cook waits for the action to start today. Certainly was hot and heavy for him yesterday. 31 plus. Santee Cooper Lakes is vast, 170,000 acres. Let's go further south. Lake Marion, and pick up Todd Auten had, as Such mentioned earlier, our uh, folks, big fish of the day. This is some action so far this morning with Todd Auten. Earlier today with Todd there. Auten. Has a real yeah. naughty little brush pile. Not as big as I thought. <coughs> Got him in the. It's pulling. The... Number one. It's. Got to start somewhere. A lot of Todd Outen's fish yesterday morning on this brush pile: a spinner bait and a suspending jerk bait. Added a few giants on a bladed jig off cypress trees. All right. A little better one. That fish looked like he about spawned out. Just a little. A little fat. 
That's the first fish I think I've caught that looked. All right, Sean. Hey, we're live. Give us a little update on your morning so far. Well, <laughs> conditions are a lot different this morning. Um, it's a lot calmer on some of the other stuff I stopped on, but this place has got a little wind on it. It's got a little current. It's, um, current comes through here and there's some brush piles kind of scattered out through here and the fish been setting up on top of them and you know I got two fish already off of them yesterday I think I caught four here and then I just you know I kind of left them and then went and caught two more big ones yesterday but you know I don't the tree fish is going to be probably better later in the day and um, I just had to go check them this morning because, you know, that size fish, you just think, well, maybe in the morning first thing you'll get a big bite. But So we scrubbed that for now, and we're out here trying to, you know, keep catch some keepers, and, you know, we just caught a four-pounder, so um, we're just going to keep things moving on and see what happens, and we're just going to have to try a bunch of different stuff today too. You know, I got some places down the lake that, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to go hit some today, I think, and uh, hopefully I'll pick up some more keepers, some more four-pounders. Todd Auden from Lake Tommy, Wiley that, area in North Carolina. It, is that the first time we've ever seen Todd Auden even have a spinning rod in his boat in 20 years? <laughs> yeah, ever? 20, yeah, or more than Good 20 for him. years, I think. Good more for him. Good. Todd Auden off to a great start here on day number two. Second place. Uh, about six and a half pounds behind Greg Hackney as it stands right now. But Todd, very clear about what his game is going to be today. We'll be with him in the boat with him all day long. Looking forward to that. Greg Hackney, as we say that. Still on top, Drew Cook waiting for things to get started. Caleb Kufal with one fish in the boat so far. And ditto for Brandon Polinick, the winner here in 2020. We got plenty more to come. The sun's getting higher. Things are expected to heat up today in so many levels. We'll be right back. Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Santee Cooper Lakes, Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite. Hey, Rapala Fantasy Fishing, cash, prizes, chances to go fishing with the likes of Mark Zona and Davey Hyde, but most of all, the chance to run rough shot over your foes, your, your friends especially. To oh, yeah. make them, as you would say, Mark Zona, feel your lash with your superior intelligence. Tommy, you're exactly right, and the rumor is on the streets last night, you have done, taken a world beater at Fantasy. You've taken him to the woodshed, young Ronnie Moore. You throttled him the last three weeks of Fantasy Fishing. Well done, Tommy oh, Sandra. Well, I'm he, talking he about the woodshed. He's on family leave, the happy kind of family leave right now, so. Uh, Feel your lash. <laughs> Love that expression. Let's get back out to Todd Auten. Yeah, Todd Auden, two fish in his live well, brush piles, five to seven feet of water yesterday, a spinner bait, suspending jerk bait. Looks like he's transitioning over to a drop shot now. He said he found these brush piles in years we'll past, never today. caught them on them, said they were set up for this time of year. Stay on, baby. Not a giant, but hey, he's a keeper, maybe. Yeah, a little one, a couple pounds. Little hook got him right where he's supposed to. Just gonna measure him for reference, but I think he's about the same as that other one, two pounds. Not a giant. Told you some more fish out there, they just get conditioned.
Boy, they hit that thing, just run with it. They don't nibble it or nothing, they just choo. I was gonna try a crankbait out there, but I just don't wanna throw that in there yet. In case I get hung up. Yep. We might have found something they like. I just, <laughs> I hate them on the spinner rod. Oh, it scares me. Oh, it come off. Yeah. That ain't good. That was probably a three pounder there. I don't know. It looked like my hook might have I don't know, opened up just a little bit, but not bad. I didn't put that much pressure on him, I don't think. Right on with a spinning nice fish. There's just nothing right about that. Net, there's nothing right about that. We're going to head across Lake Marion right now. And take a really cool look. We got to talk about it, that these guys were fishing near you, doing things that are different as far as techniques go. Taking a look at Hummingbird Bird's Eye View of Drew Cook fishing basically he has been fishing one bass all morning long and this kind of gives you a gauge and even though they're fishing different techniques how close a lot of these anglers are to each other taking a look at this hummingbird bird's eye view that was drew cook in the back of that pad field take a look at brandon polinick out in the mouth of that pad field Polinick, pretty much everything that he put on the scales yesterday coming offshore. Really, really cool look that even though they're fishing totally different techniques, there was, well, you're looking at about 55 pounds of bass between the two of those anglers. Mm. Actually, a little bit more than that. Yeah. Hummingbird bird's eye view. Slow day, though, for Polinick and Drew Cook so far. Gerald Swindle was our first to a limit, but it's very small. He'd like to get rid of all those fish. They weigh about the same as uh, Clifford Perch's big bass, 8-4. Good day yesterday for Swindle. I didn't like 21 that. pounds. Yeah. Not in a good way. <laughs> you know, talking to Polinick and Todd Auten after the weigh-in yesterday, their day looked great, Tommy, but it was, uh, for the most most part, pretty grimy. Both anglers catching seven bass all day long. And you look at Polinick. Polinick did that that weight, 26-2, with a two-and-a-half pounder in his bag. Yeah. Spent most of the day with four fish. Yeah, I think Polnick's biggest was a 6.8, and they weighed another one. I think it was a 6.6. Here he hooked up. Shoot, that ain't going to make it. I didn't have to do this yesterday. <laughs> Let's hear it. 
little shot of the way in there with true yeah, it was. There. still about yeah show me more of that that was impressive david you you sure. got to see all that uh, that was kind of take you back to 2006 you fished in that tournament back in the day <laughs> yeah absolutely some some great times in no doubt about it but but i have found ashley and i have found the happening place there on the la lower end of lake mary and uh, and it's it's so interesting to see all the different anglers and, and the way they're fishing. I mean, you got Drew Cook that is looking at every fish he's fishing for. Brandon Politnik doing the same thing, but offshore looking with his forward-facing sonar and his his down image and side image and that sort of thing. But it's a lot going on, and we've it really really seems like most of these fish are heading to the bank. But Brandon Politnik and a few other anglers, you know, Todd Alton fishing brush piles a little deeper. So we'll see how the day unfolds, but I really think with the full moon last night, this morning it was beautiful. Uh, a lot of these fish should be going to the bank, and I think you'll see the weights possibly even be better than they were yesterday. Wow. Davey, one of the things that we talked about before this tournament I actually called you when you were driving around the lake was that area up in the swamp obviously was not a player at all on day number one. And you're starting to see a lot of those anglers that were up there. You're talking probably two dozen boats now have dispersed into areas like you're in there, areas across the lake at Utah Springs. How will that affect those prime areas where a lot of those big bags came on day number one? Well, uh, more pressure is not exactly what you want, but but. You know, we talked about it uh, before the tournament started, see, that the, all that rain and the water getting really stained up there on that end. And the other thing, for a lot of these anglers, when we were here in 2020, it's their first time to Santee Cooper Lakes. And, and that upper end in the fall of the year when we were here, uh, it, it's traditionally good. But, but this time of the year, the areas like we're in now, you know, the lower part of Lake Marion and then Lake Moultrie, uh, certainly a big, big player and in, in basically was not at all when we were here in 2020 in the fall of the year. So different time of year. I, I really love going to lakes, same lakes. They're great lakes, but go at different times of year because they set up totally, totally different. Taking a look at Gerald Swindle right now, Davey Hodge. Such a different look today. I mean, yesterday, cloudy except for a few little stretches in the afternoon. Well, well, it's, it just looks like a different place. And what's the different approach when you have to wait out the sun and, and get, get the sun up high enough to do your job? Yeah, yeah, Tommy. I, I think the anglers said they're they're fishing. Uh, you know, like a Greg Hackney, they're fishing. A lot of those fish are spawning, but but he's not trying to look at the fish so much. It's just fish form. Those anglers seem to excel early in the morning, even when you have these calm conditions. But as that sun gets up, well, I guarantee you we'll see Drew Cook, uh, maybe a Hank Cherry, some of those anglers that caught their fish looking at every single one of them yesterday do better. But I did notice the local weather forecast is calling for some, some thunderstorms to come in this afternoon between 4 and 5 o'clock. So uh, that might affect some of those guys that are sight fishing, but it really could make it really good in the afternoon for the people that are casting like a Todd Alton that you know throwing chatterbait some spinner baits and that sort of thing a, a Greg Hackney that's fishing for those fish and not physically just looking at those fish so I think we'll see some changes throughout the day but the sight fishermen it's just now really the sun's just getting up where they can see well hey Davey real quick you hear a term down there and I've heard it around you and a bunch of the local hammers a lot down there you hear about march trees and you hear about april trees and one of the things that hackney said he has to have a bank it can't be one of these forests it has to have a bank talk about the difference of trees that, that an angler would fish throughout march and april yeah, yeah, Z, it's, it's, it's a very different time and what's going on. Now, you will have fish spawn here on Santee Cooper Lakes from February to May. I mean, so so the, the spawn does last, you know, through through March and April, no doubt about it. But the, the, the biggest majority of the fish usually come up to spawn from mid-March to about the 1st of April. You'll have some before and you'll definitely have some after. But now like hackney's talking about those fish that are using those trees they're spawning around those trees they will spawn around the roots of those trees but in april a lot of times it'll be be trees that are offshore more 
because of shad spawn, the, those shad will actually get up around those trees and run circles around those trees. Uh, on other lakes, you see them use riprap more. You see them use boat docks and that sort of thing. But here there'll be trees. So those trees that are out away from the bank uh, starting in April seem to be better trees. Davey, you talked to so many guys out there. And a lot of these, including Jason Christie, who we covered all day yesterday, a lot of these guys, this is their first or second visit to the Santee Cooper Lakes. How would you grade those guys, uh, that, that group, so far in this tournament? Yeah, yeah, Tommy, it, it's just overwhelming, uh, so to speak. To, to come here, to come here, you know, for your first trip, there is so big. Just one of these lakes is, is hard to tackle with just three days of practice, uh, let alone try to fish both of them. So it's just very, very difficult. But but this lake is a lake that I'm sure Jason Christie will want to come back to, and you'll see him do great, probably a lot better today uh, because it's his type of lake. But it's just it's a little overwhelming for your first few days on these two lakes. Davey, real quick, this is one of those. I mean, it was a top-heavy beatdown. And we've, I mean, I covered a lot of these tournaments where you're at the weigh-in and some of the guys at the, a lot of your rookies that might be at the bottom of the standings, was there some anglers that were absolutely shell-shocked on day number one at the weigh-in? Oh, absolutely. I don't, you could just see the expressions on their face when they were walking up to the to the the scales and the bump board, that sort of thing. You could just see the looks on some of those guys' face. They had no idea because there was a lot of in practice. It was like, man, it took me two days to get a bite. You heard that from, you know, a Seth Fighter's like, man, I, I finally caught my second one late in the uh, my first one, the late in the d second day of practice. So uh, a lot of these guys were shell shocked, no doubt about it. But but, hey, it can be that way. You know, the Lake Hartwell, where, where we had the Classic, we all talked about how close it was going to be, and it certainly was. But when you come to Santee Cooper Lakes, there's going to be some of those big mega bags, and then there'll be some people that are just, they're out, I hate to say it this way, but they're out in left field. I mean, you can be 40 miles from where it's happening. Today, Ashley and I are where it's happening. There's a lot of boats right here, and there'll be a lot of fish caught today. But some of those guys yesterday that were up in the swamp, that's uh, that. It wasn't a real good day for him. Davey, thank no. you so much. We also we always appreciate Davey being where it's happening, and uh, we will lean on him some more during the course of this day. Dave and Davey, uh, Height and Mercer will be driving the bus a little bit later today, and we look forward to that. Yeah, it's a big place, 170,000 acres. This place is there. There are counties. <laughs> They're smaller in this country than, than the water you have available in the Santee Cooper Lakes. But for now, Greg Hackman still on top. Working on his limit, but he's pretty much all the way there. Todd Auten, one good one in the boat and a, a small one as well. Things are progressing, and Davey Heights is going to get a whole lot better. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Well, uh, today kind of went as planned. Ended up weighing 26 pounds. I did not get as many bites as I was hoping for, but I got the right quality of bites early on. I have no idea how the rest of this week's gonna shake out, but thankful to get a good start. That's what you need here. Uh, the crazy part is 26 pounds doesn't even have me in the lead, but definitely a good start this week. Pretty hard to beat Clarendon County when you got that many big bass swimming around in here so here's to uh getting back out there making day two i still need to catch a dirty 30. I'm yet to catch a dirty 30 on the elite series i feel like this is the week to do it dirty 30 mm -hmm. of course the century belt the other part of your vocabulary that comes into play when we come to the sea yes. super lakes right there brandon polemic into, into his second decade hard to believe as an elite series angler one here back in 2020 on the second visit by the elite. To the Santee Cooper Lakes, it's vast and, and fertile, fertile place to grow big bass. Yeah, that's something you kind of have to point out here as we're, you know, an hour into this thing. Granted, conditions perfect for the way a Drew Cook and a Hank Cherry caught them on day number one, but Drew Cook and Hank Cherry both struggling so far here today. I got one, like three, three and a half pounder. How about you?
Not anymore. Guess I was a little too late. <laughs> Yeah. Getting a look at Corey Johnston right there, having a good morning already yeah. inside of Brandon Polinick. With four fish, Corey has our. Uh Biggest bag of the day so far, 13 and a half pounds, up in third place. He and his brother Chris, big sight fisherman, as Dave Mercer pointed out, they do a lot of that in yeah. Canada. Uh, Tommy, let me throw something real, real quick. Hank Cherry, hang on real quick. Caleb Kufal. Uh, not a big one either. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're not going away, buddy. Got him. Well, I was just about to reel that one in, and he hit it. Didn't even really get a good hook in him. Keeper number two for Caleb Kufal. Half ounce homemade jig, day number one. Little bit of damage with a spinner bait. Tore up Tommy Sanders about that Devontae Adams trade last night. Oh, is he? Oh, my goodness. He really is. Well, he's... legions of folks tore up about that, yeah. I'm sure. Everybody oh, around Chicago, is... not so much. <laughs> Just he's fine. So big. Not so much. It is what it is. That's what they say in Chicago. Devontae Adams has done bad things to no, Chicago Bears fans for and, so and many years. Fans across this country. <laughs> and what I was going to say about Hank Cherry, Tommy, was that area that we did our BMW trailer hitches call with him yesterday. Mm -hmm. He said there was a few males in there on Tuesday. And he went in there yesterday and said there was giants swimming everywhere. In fact, he was talking about it when we made yeah, our, yeah. our phoner to him. He said he cleaned out a bed, caught the male, caught two females, came back, and there was more locked on the same bed. And that's when he said, man, I just pulled the plug and left there. Yeah. Obviously, that has, has not happened today for Hank Cherry. But he, he said it was literally insane how many big ones were in a 30-yard stretch. Mm -hmm. They're vying for the exact same bed. Yeah, and, and actually, Such, this is the exact lake Tommy Sanders and I got to see that same thing happen in 2006. You clean the bed off. It was just a general St. Patty's Day party around that area, if you know what I mean. There's a conga line getting up into these beds there. Right, <laughs> man. <laughs> Next. Um, I'm looking at a great big one that just will not sit still. It's, I don't know, it's like a five or six pounder. That one over there that we looked at a minute ago that I ran over is a four or five pounder. Now that I can actually see, I'm seeing fish swimming around. But one of the ones I left is gone. I mean, it could have got caught yesterday afternoon. You don't have any idea. There's no real distinct bed right here except right there, but I've seen her twice now. I just gotta find where the area is. But with this bright sunshine, that full moon, you know, I'm probably gonna see a lot of them swimming that are just in here swimming. See right there on that little bitty bed? This is really why I despise fishing like this.
Big upside, big downside. A lot of what Hank Jerry caught yesterday on the new Berkeley Take Crash Craw. Got a picture of that we'll put up here in a little bit. I'll take that and be able to see. Don't count me out yet. Oh. I said, don't count me out yet. Got a long day. Tommy, another thing, that area where he did all of his damage yesterday, we kind of kept a, our eye on the mapping and all the anglers. It never got touched. I mean, he found a little pocket that really, it got zero pressure except from Hank Cherry yesterday. Wow. Got to come out some clothes. He's just not doing what he likes to do. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he, he, he knows he's going to have to do some of that. Keep pace with all these overachievers out there on Sandy Cooper. I got a long day, did I tell you? Five o'clock. Well, I, I, you know, it's one of the reasons I can get by with fishing like we're fishing right now because I'm like, I got a decent start and I got a long time. And if they're not biting right now, I de this is when I'll have to fish the slowest. Uh, there'll be some time today when I'll be able to uh, pick it up a little bit. You know what I mean? I'll just be able to roll and you still got to hit them on the head, but it seems like when they go to biting, that's all you got to do. So, so I, honestly, I, I mean, if we make it back up there, I'm going to fish tomorrow already. So, I mean, life is good. Oh, and it's been good for him all day long so far, Tommy Sanders. Pretty much came out firing Marathon Peak Performance, Greg Hackney. If you didn't get to join us the first 20 minutes of Bassmaster Live, Greg Hackney with a big day one. Grossly Dude. underestimated the bag that he put on the scales with Dave Mercer. Striking Rage Bug color, June Bug. This morning, Marathon Peak Performance was very solid with Greg Hackney this morning, making the comment that he is definitely fishing for bass that are spawning. He's not able to lay his eyes on him and pretty scary for the rest of the field when Greg Hackney is already smiling saying, I've got a long, long day. Great morning for the Louisiana angler, fishing how he basically cut his teeth. A lot of the oxbows in Southeast Arkansas. I'm talking about coal pile, Jack. That is a Star City special right there in his hand. Look at him. Yeah. Plinking. He said he's plinking oh, all day long. From yeah, it is. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Guess who's home, boy? <laughs> Grab some wood, boy. Marathon peak performance. Pretty much 8 o'clock to 8.30. Pretty good flurry for Greg Hackney. That is going to be your marathon peak performance in the driver's seat. And it appears that he's kind of getting lathered up for the weekend, if you know what I mean. Boy. Marathon peak performance. Doing a lot of smiling this morning. Probably exactly he is. where he wants to be. It's, it's a little uncharacteristic. Because <laughs> you, you can get the other side of Greg Hackney, too. Yeah. <laughs> He's got the full range. 
make a comment on stage that his wife, Julie, was at the Classic in Greenville, would love to someday retire there for the wintertime stretch. And Greg said, no, we'll retire right down the road here on Santee Cooper Lakes. <laughs> yeah. A little more up his alley. Boy. It's really amazing to see how methodical he is doing this. And, and that's the one thing of the years that we've covered him, Tommy, in, especially in situations like this. And, and here's the other, the best way to put it. He just flat out fished everybody around him yesterday because there was a lot of traffic. Mm. This kind of bite was available to him at the St. John's River last year. He trounced him. Absolutely. Yes. Was not able to get that going there this year, but it came back strong at uh, Harris Chain with the top 12. But you know, if you're a if you're a beginning angler, you say to yourself, "Well, why? Why? Why is he better than?" If you notice, yeah. he's quiet, patient. And, and when he gets a bite by a male this time of year, that area is going to get saturated for the next half hour, you know, in hopes of getting that. And it's what happened yesterday. He said he rolled through an area and caught a pile of males and came right back through it and, and picked off every female that he weighed in. this time of morning, day two of the Bassmaster Elite Series, no matter where we are. Like to start up the <laughs> That's right, the daily trivia train. Absolutely. Roll on down the tracks. Today's question, question number one is, what was Preston Clark's best single day record-setting 115-15 here in 2006? Was it 36-9 at 37-8? A 38.7 or a 39.6? Could it be A, B, C, or D? So give it a think. We'll take a quick break and we will be back to the Santee Cooper Lakes for more action live from day two of the Bassmaster Elite Series. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Boats and by Rapala. Day two action live in the Santee Cooper Lakes. A guaranteed Ray Bassmaster Elite third stop of the year. 94 anglers out there today trying to make it to the 47th position or better. Our daily trivia will set the stage for you. Preston Clark shattered the records for four days of fishing with 150, almost 116 pounds here in 2006. He did not shatter the single day record. What was his best single day catch? Was it 36-9, B-37-8, C-38-7, or D-39-6? Mark Zona, I'm betting you know this. Oh boy, it's gonna be one of the top heavy ones. Either I'm either 37, 38, I'm gonna go it was 39-6. I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I think that is the true answer. You we guys nailed it. Our striker David Trigg. Yeah, look at that. There's other bags, 29-5, 23-15, and 23-5. Catch 115, you're not much off that number for any of those four days. That is a tremendous, tremendous performance by Preston Clark. And now it's Greg Hackney in the lead today, day two early on. I'm fishing for basically where I think fish are spawning and then you can't see them. I just kind of felt like that after we had all that cold weather that those fish might stay and uh, those clear water fish were really, really squirrely. Now, I, I expect for them to play a factor 
you know, I don't know. I'm just hoping to get two days out of the area where I fish today, and then I'll start moving around. I came in this creek, you know, at this, this, this creek is full of fish. Basically just fishing on the bottom, you know, fishing around uh, cypress trees and grass and weeds. And again, like anything that looks to me like where fish would be bedding at, that's kind of what I'm, kind of what I'm targeting. So, you know, it was a great day. I love this lake, I always have. So historically, it's been good, you know, to me. So I, uh, I like to fish here. Regardless of how the week turns out, I do love this place. If there's any place in the country that we go that I would actually think about moving, I would move here. Just because I get to fish here like I like to fish, and I get to fish here around stuff I like to fish. <laughs> it's just a beautiful place, man. It's, it's awesome, it's so big. It's got a lot of big fish in it. It's a fun place to fish. I didn't know how it was gonna be this week because you know, it had been so cold or whatever, but it showed out just like it always does. I've never been here when it didn't, so uh, good times. That's right. Good times, Tommy Sanders. And I'll tell you one thing, it, it, you could just tell yesterday at the weigh-in when he's smiling, slinking around, you just kind of tell today's a different day, Tommy Sanders. Huh? We're going to take a right-hand turn. The power pole replay of the day was him being sneaky, slinking. It's not this catch right here. It's not the striking rage bug. It's the look. Keep your eye on him right now. Creeping around every single catch, if you notice. Looking around right here. <laughs> I know. I know, Tommy Sanders. Your power pole replay of the day. Not scared to get outside of the box and experiment here on Friday. The boss is gone. He's headed to California. Your power pole replay of the day is you, Greg Hackney. That's right. Grab some wood, boy. I, I see do. you. <laughs> he is so weird. I've got to pit another. <laughs> oh, Take a look at this. No, no, no. Not, well, that, that was here, actually. But look at this real creepy one right here. He always told me he was big in the clowns. Clowns at a young age. Oh that is actually. Channel 7. That's right. At Channel 7, Greg Hackney back in 1980. Wow. Feeling it. Owning it. Big thanks to Julie Hackney for sending that five years ago. Yeah. I don't throw things away. <laughs> I can't imagine him being a kid. <laughs> Look, and man, listen, Such, I have a lot more today, on this phone thought... that cannot leave. You know, oh, it was a book. Please. So... Right Let's touch and go there just for a second. Look at my bait. Never had to hook in it. I just had enough pressure on it that it could never got slack. That's the big reason I don't. Golly, dude. Well, he freaking had it. No. Dang it. Two six, number one. Took us a while, but maybe that female, if that female get up there now, we'll be be doing good. Let me know. Keeper number one for Drew Cook. Slow, slow morning so far, but I, I, I boy, I do want to rewind to Hackney showing that soft plastic 
that bass, that that soft plastic, the hook never penetrated the material of that bait. It was all the pressure on that. So we transitioned over to Drew Cook. First bass of the day, a little bit surprising right there for Drew Cook. I said maybe the female will get up there now. Now he had fallen to seventh place. What was that in the background? It was a gallon <laughs> Got her, son. Freaking got her. Dude, and I'm not talking about got her by much, but I freaking got her. That's a pretty big one now. Yeah. She's bigger than I thought she was. That was awesome. We need to roll that whole fish catch again, how he was shaking that bait. Mm. Seven pounder, baby. Let's go. Freaking fighting frog doing his job, son. Letting our live wells overrun. We're just too dang excited. That was number two. So really break down what happened right there. Drew Cook catching a male that he had worked on that bed for a long time, Tommy Sanders. Watch how he works that bait. That female set up on that bed actually grieve in the green, green, grieve in the background. And that female setting up on that bed right after he caught the male. That's perfection as far as sight fishing goes. Got her, son. Freaking got her. Dude, and I'm not talking about got her by much, but I freaking got her. Oh, yeah. You talk about Greg Hackney being one of the best ones on cypress trees. When, when it is a sight fishing show, Drew Cook, absolutely right one of the best on the Elite Series. Seven magic pounder puts frog, him back in second 22 place. 22 pound Sunline shooter, four out Gamagatsu G finesse, heavy cover hook, quarter ounce weight. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to rig it. Amazing what a seven pounder will do to you. <laughs> you watching that? That's awesome, dude. When that quits, I'll I'll quit. That's right. I'll be done fishing when that that right there stops. Yes, sir. Tommy, you notice he worked on that fish for about Dang, 90 minutes, and the second, Boy, the second a grebe shows up, he puts it in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> also caught the male at the same time, but that's just absolutely that's beside the point, right? Man, that was cool to watch how that mm. transpired. That female yeah. locked on that bed. Uh, meet, and the other thing to really look at: look how far he got off of that bed compared to this morning in mm -hmm, low light mm -hmm. that that it, that whole deal right there is a story of how he fished that bed I'm going to take a look actually right when we went to Drew Cook in that 
male and female. Really watch what happens with Hackney right here. That fish comes off in the boat. Watch his soft plastic and what he shows us right here. Boy, that's scary. Okay. That's scary stuff right there. Nice Let's touch and go there just for a second. Take a look at his bait right here when he shows the camera. Look at my bait. Never had the hook in it. I just had enough pressure on it that it could never got slack. That's the big reason I don't. I like pulling. They come out of there so fast. Never got the hook in that fish. I mean, it was the point come through the deal, but it wouldn't. It never went through his mouth. Is that number five? Now it's Hackney and Cook on top of the leaderboard, six pounds clear of everyone else. That was an awesome little segment of events right there. Very cool. Let's get back out to Hank Sherry. Don't count him out. One fish only, though, so far. That is keeper number two for Hank Cherry. Small males in that area, but he has laid his eyes on some real big ones here the last 60 minutes. Oh, man. I'm measuring this 16 inches long. <laughs> I don't more. One more $10,000 when I look at it. Oh yeah, we're gonna slink back around the corner, Tommy Sanders. Slow morning so far. Fishing just outside of that lily pad field. Your leader from day number one, Drew Cookson. Back over to Brandon Polinick, who looks like he also has pulled the plug on that deep water game. Did this a little while at the end of the day yesterday. Got it. Oh. Oh gosh. No, 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 no. Get out of those pads. Get out of those pads. Stay on there. Stay on there. Go, come, come on. Stay on there. Stay on there. He's gone. Gosh, dang it. Mm. It's like almost four pounder. <sighs> First cast with the drop shot. He swims over there and bites it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Well, it is gnarly down there. We saw that with Carl Chalkins yesterday. Lee. And no doubt about it, you do not see that very often with Brandon Polinick. But uh, things, the sun is getting high, the lights are on, things starting to happen on Sandy Cooper Lakes. Brandon Polinick, former progressive angler of the year. There he sits in third place right now here in 2022 in our progressive wow. series angler of the year standing, John Cox. Through the course of yesterday's action uh, assumed the top spot. David Mullins, who came in here with the lead, is now in second place, but a good tight race, as you would expect at this time of year. And hey, just by the way, Drew Cook backing up those three in fourth place. We've got the big players in action out there today. 
Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Happy Friday to you, TGIF. Hey, look at him lined up. There we go. Ready to go. That's uh, yeah, that's about a 70 horse equivalent right there, I would imagine. Some of our horses have started to uh, rear up and get onto the racetrack here in our last 30 minutes of angling here. Drew Cook, who had a slow day after exactly a 30 right. pound plus, and Greg Hackney filling out his limit. In the bass it didn't even uh, didn't even require the point Just of the hook to get him. To him. <laughs> Yeah, Hackney with a her, good, son. solid limit that isn't live well, but Drew Cook spending a lot of time on that one. Almost felt like it got a little bit personal. He said he had a seven-pounder that he had found late yesterday. Well, that was it right there for Drew Cook. Set up on another one, Drew Cook Live. I'll let it sit there a minute. Watch what he's doing right there. About swung the hammer. <laughs> yeah, on this piece of grass. All the years that we've covered Drew Cook, you noticed when he gets one really fired up, he did it on that seven pounder. You can watch him doing it here when he starts tapping the butt of his rod, just making that bait quiver in the bed. Is that the cook quake? I believe now she's aware. Good look at that fighting frog right there, the color tilapia magic. And if you're just tuning in to Bassmaster Live, one of the things we said earlier, Drew Cook said on Monday and Tuesday, he just hammered on his trolling motor and would find females floating, not locked on. You know, whether they were on a, a root ball or a lay down, he would GPS, he'd lock a waypoint on any of those big females. And he said, yesterday, the nearest bed those exact same females would either be locked on or very close to. Let's uh, bring Davey Hyde into this conversation. B&W Trailer Hitches on the line with our own Davey Hyde. And I know you've been watching that right there. You look like you're in right in the Great same stuff. area. I don't know if that's, if they, I, I guess that's the case. And Davey, uh, the, he's backed off. I mean, you, you think of side fishing that we've seen. He stays backed off. I mean, way backed off. That's, that's, uh, that strikes me as one of the unique things about Drew Cook. Yeah, it's, it's so important to uh, stay as far away from those fish as you can. And, and the neat thing is you see uh, an angler like Drew Cook that'll, that'll be close to that fish early in the morning or if you have stained water, 
but but then as the sun gets up a little higher they're able to back off and get away from those fish and, and that's that's what's so key obviously you can see better with the sun but but you can get away from those fish and they don't feel you and uh you know you don't want them to see you but also just your boat being there your presence being there it's better to back off away from those fish yeah it was it was really cool for me to watch this morning how long he spent to catch that male and how quickly he caught that big you know seven pounder after he caught that male most of the time that male will bite quickly and it can take a lot longer to catch a female but sometimes it works out the way it did for drew cook and certainly you know he's got it going on yesterday and today davy one of the things that cook said after the weigh-in was man and, and granted he has he has other areas where they're locked on but he said he's going to try to burn this area that you're around all day long he said he's going to try to burn it down today but also f- felt that the conditions warranted a lot more coming up a lot more look a lot of resident fish got caught yesterday but he felt more lake fish would be coming in what are you seeing yeah i absolutely agree with that you know in a four-day event in the spring of the year because things change so quickly they change overnight you want to be fishing where those fish are coming to you not going away and and, you know Mm. with pre-spawn during the spawn and then post-spawn there's there's fish that'll be moving shallow and then there'll be fish that'll be moving out we saw some people like Brandon Pollnett yesterday, you know, do really well offshore and some other anglers f- fishing brush piles offshore and Brandon fishing some timber and some brush piles. But I really felt like, man, they might catch those today, but that's going to be hard to keep doing that every day because the fish are really coming in, like you said, Z. And, and Santee Cooper Lakes, this is one place, Lake Marion, Lake Moultrie, Clarendon County, this is one place no, where – man overnight they will just pile in on a place just absolutely incredible it's it's mind-boggling there's some places on the lower lake especially the duck pond area that it's like holy cow how can so many fish come in overnight put a cool marker on him some love Mm. all right before we get carried away let's go ahead and restrain retie So I had seen um, that fish up there earlier, but whenever I was like close to it, it uh, obviously it could see me, so it it wouldn't wouldn't act right. So that time, whenever I came around, um, I was probably a good 20 yards away and uh, just threw up there to it. And the first cast I threw up there, um, she bit, but didn't get it. I don't know how. And then. The next cast, you did the same thing. So I eased up a little bit closer, but still not very close. I couldn't see. And um, just blind pitching in there. And um, I shook it, stopped it. And uh, that's when she actually ate it and started swimming off with it. We've got two, two keepers. Listen to Drew Cook right there. You are looking at two masters of their game today. Drew Cook sight fishing, Greg Hackney flipping cypress trees. And and really, Davey, what this has turned into, you said there is a lot of pressure in the area Drew Cook is in equally as well with Greg Hackney. It's just both of these anglers right now are annihilating the competition around them. They they definitely are, Z, and it's 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 really amazing to watch because these elite anglers they're all good. They they had to get here and through the opens or, and it's it's really really tough to make it to the elites. But then when you see fifteen or twenty boats, great fishermen fishing around one another, and you see a Greg Hackney, you see a Drew Cook, you really appreciate their talent. See, I got to ask you something. It crossed yeah. my mind. You know, sight fishing. When you see people trying to get stand up on the brackets of their trolling motor and that thing every every little bit gives you an advantage looking looking at those fish and i don't mean this in a bad way i mean this in a positive way drew cook is i guess uh the the shortest in statue person i have ever seen 
that is one of the best sight fishermen I've ever seen. The best sight fisherman for his size, I guess, so to speak. Because I'm telling you, two, three, four inches difference in the way you're looking Absolutely. down on a fish is a big deal. And Drew Cook, no doubt about it, is one of the best in the business. You, you know, and the other, and I agree with that. It, it uh, if you watch. The other thing about Drew Cook is is absolutely how he knows the mannerisms of every single fish. And the you look, man, a lot of beginning anglers, you want to get, Davey, you know this, you, and veteran anglers, you want to get up close and personal and see how that fish is acting. He Tommy nailed it when, when he caught that seven-pounder and, and other ones throughout the years. He stays a long, long distance and really – doesn't want to even see the bass. He just wants to know that area. Uh, and he really has. He's turned in to one of the best sight fishermen that we have covered in many years on the Elite Series. Yeah, and one other thing that I've noticed, he gets way back off those fish, and you see so many anglers, we've done it, uh, they, they'll they bite a natural-looking bait better, but you like to be able to see your bait. So you'll see people using white baits, uh, you know, chartreuse, baits that you can see and tell where that bait is in the bed. Drew Cook uses that natural-looking color. I've never seen him, uh, yes. or, or if I have, I don't remember, i ever seen him using a white bait or a chartreuse bait. He uses a natural color bait and gets back away from those fish. Fighting frog color tilapia magic, which is Davey, you nailed it. I mean, it's pretty much all he uses. And Davey, I gotta gotta shift gears as we're watching Drew Cook move on and look for another one. You talked about being in the right area today of of Santee Cooper Lakes. Jason Christie having a bad day yesterday said he fell on about 30 pounds of crab legs on Wednesday evening, and lo and behold. You fell on the right area, and we're just slinking around that dinner we heard. Yeah, you know, happened. you've actually been there before, Z, and we had some prime oh, ribs, no. so I, I know where to show up and when to show up. That, no doubt about it. <laughs> Go on now. Hey, Davey, real quick, real quick. One of, the, one of the things that we're seeing in this tournament right now, it's eerily similar, even though it was a fall event, Lake Marion was the showpiece the last time the elite series is here we're really seeing it again where man why is moultrie not shined in the last few tournaments well i, I think it's is better you know the last time we were here it was as i remember steve kennedy fishing down there some buddy gross fishing down there some and and uh, kennedy saw him okay buddy gross okay but not great but but this time, I really expected to see it shine, and, and there were some fish caught there yesterday. I think more people going there today, but the lake level, the upper lake has, has came up and got some color, and, and the water level is about perfect, where the lower lake has been falling, consistently falling. This morning, it was no change from yesterday, but still lower, so coming in, it was just the opposite, but if the upper lake stays that way we'll have a lot of fish caught but we need the lower lake to rise just a little bit just a little bit on the lower lake and the fishing will get a lot better there you're always in the right place Davey <laughs> Hyde ain't no doubt about that BMW trailer that you on the line that's where our 84 anglers are situated right now things stand getting later in the morning here Look yesterday at the weigh in a lot to see plenty Ooh. to see taco Edu. Taku Ida with 21 pounds of 10 ounces, including that giant right there. Matt Airy having a great, great day. His best day of the year so far. Young Patrick Walters. Yeah, Patrick everyone. Walters. <laughs> right. One of those grossly underestimated bags that we got to see as usual with young Patrick Walters. Masayuki Matsushita and Polinic. Man, so patient all day long. But spent most yes. of the day with four fish in the box. There's Hank Cherry. Caught those and saw a whole bunch more. Let's see if he can relocate them today. Todd Auten, very, very strong. And a giant, the biggest fish of the day in 813. Really, if you look at Greg Hackney and his day so far, Tommy, if you rewind to Bassmaster Live yesterday, this was about the time of day fish started setting up big time shallow. It's going to be a fun, fun afternoon, no doubt, on Bassmaster Live. I think you're right. Plenty of reasons to stick around or check in often. We will continue our live coverage of the going. Drew Cook now regained 
That lead from Greg Hackney now is just kind of well, just a pound in ounces. Very, very close race at the top, and look how far you have to drop down to pick up three through the rest of our top ten right there. So it's a top-heavy field right now. Who knows what's going to transpire? We'll be right back. Whoa! Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Santee Cooper Lakes getting later into our morning session of fishing here. Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite from Clarendon County. Let's take a look at our unofficial leaderboard right now, and you see Drew Cook having regained the top spot there. Some magnificent catches we have seen recently from him and Greg Hackney, an early limit, good solid limit. We look at the anglers who have jumped up into the top 10 during the course of this morning. That would be Brandon Lester, Steve Kennedy, Clifford Perch, Corey Johnston, and Carl Jockinson from outside the top 10. Boy, what a journey he had. We were in the boat with him all day yesterday, Z. Tommy, it was more of an adventure. Carl Jacobson starting off with a keeper early in the morning on day number one. And then it went, went from bad to worse to awful until this bass right here throwing a wacky worm. And I believe it was an X zone wacky worm later in the day. And this one right here turning the tide for Carl Jacobson. And the most amazing thing is if you really watched his day, this isn't good. It was a hot mess. We had, oh. we got to text back and forth, and it was afternoon where they really started Hell setting up on a lot of these isolated cypress trees. Carl Jacobson really out of nowhere on stage with Dave Mercer yesterday, catching 19 pounds, 14 ounces. And he here's the best way to put it. We did not show it. He missed a big one, punching a mat, and it kind of really crushed his morning big rebound and this morning the mercury move of the day carl jockinson with a very very and, and here's the best you cannot phrase it any differently tommy the mercury move of the day was carl jockinson not leaving jack's creek yesterday yeah. he was trying to talk himself out of it kind of bunkered in there did all of his damage there today carl jockinson mercury move not really of the day Two days. There's some bonus coverage. We're going to watch Carl for a while now. And Carl, man, we were just talking about what a move yesterday. You were going to leave. You were going to leave. And you caught that fish that was gave you so much trouble. And, uh, man, hats off to you for sticking with it. Yes, yeah, sometimes, Tommy, that's just what it takes, you know. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for one bite that can change your day, can change your tournament. Um, but, you know, my problem yesterday was – after things didn't go right was deciding what to do you know i was just my brain was just like where am i going to move to i just didn't know i didn't have the confidence in anything that i had so i'm like you just want to find a place where you're like okay this is the deal this is what i need to be doing and i've lost all of that and it wasn't until i crept up and got in behind all of those guys where uh, basically where they're not getting that's what I saw. I looked and I saw where the locals were, where the elites were fishing, and I pushed back a little bit further. That's when it started happening, and I got that one bite. And then when I got the five, you know, once you make that decision in your head, you're like, okay, this is where I need to be and this is where I'm staying. And you slow down, you fish more methodically, you're calmer, all the things that you need to be to catch bass. And that allowed me to catch the 19 pounds. Like Zina said, it wasn't pretty, but I got it done. Carl, our, our text last night between each other, why do you insist when you're on Bassmaster Live to freak yourself, the viewers, and all of us in the production area out the entire day? It wouldn't be fun if it was if it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, real quick on – you you had some really key bites, big bites, the same way that you caught them the last time we were here, punching mats. Has that gone away as it's warmed up? Yep, 100%. As soon as I was, when I saw the water start stabilizing at a kind of a cool temperature, like at 61 to 63, I was like, Punching is going to be the deal. Like, I got, I didn't get many bites, and all the majority of the mats are gone. But 
but the mats were isolated. They were small, and they were under there in practice. But as soon as that full moon really kicked in, we got sun. That was the odd bite to be had. And if I did it all day, maybe you could. But I did it. I got that one big bite, and then it was like cricket after that. So once they really decide to lock on, the mat bite goes away. I've seen it happen so many times. I've got on that bite, and then it literally disappears when they decide to actually move. Carl, real quick, are you seeing uh, these fish today, and are you seeing a lot of other competitors, or are you left alone? There's a there's a few back here. Like I said they're they're fishing out wide. Um, not a, I I think I caught about the second biggest bag up here. Um, but I think there was a couple pretty decent ones. But you can definitely see. Um, but what's interesting? Well, the fish that I've caught today are all fry guard. Every one of them. Um, so I think that's what they were yesterday. Like I don't think any of those were female. Not even that five pounder just not those big, fat-bellied ones. And so when I started, I pushed up shallow again and I started catching them straight away. And as the sun came out, I got up there and there's the big balls of fry and then I saw, you know, those males moving off. The cool thing here is, like, males are three to five, six pounds. So you can catch a big limit. But I'm trying to get to maybe 18 doing this and then I'm going to move a little bit deeper and try and catch the females that are still spawning that I can't see yet and then I'm going to get up shallow the last couple of hours and just try and find a couple of those big ones that hopefully are locked on but confidence is up, we've got a good little plan going, you know the locals that are fishing around me aren't getting bites so it's been good I'll Well Carl, great job Great job today. Thanks for the feel on it. yesterday. Feeling it. Man, definitely feeling it. Carl Jockinson out there moving himself definitely into contention. Good for Carl. Yeah, uh, honestly, absolutely. we were we were goofing talking back and forth last night and it was a it was a it was a roller coaster <laughs> yeah, all day long with Carl, but great great stringer. Great performance at the end of the day. Hey, something to really watches Todd Auten, who had a brush pile area early this morning, five to seven feet of water and a key stretch of cypress trees in the same area as Caleb Kufal, both of those anglers catching big mm -hmm. stringers yesterday. Todd Auten not happening on that key stretch of cypress trees, similar to Caleb Kufal today. Get about it. BFA, Chris Saldane, seven pounder. He started the day down in the 70s. I got him inside the cut for now. Three fish, three fish yesterday, three fish today. That alert still scares me. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, me here. too. Yeah. There's Todd Otten's area, Hummingbird bird's eye view. Man, that water is clear, too. I thought his big fish came around 10, 30, 11 yesterday. It did. It did. I think the way Todd Auten caught some of his big ones, those suits, yesterday on some of those outer cypress trees, Todd Auten, a lot of those fish that came off of trees were pre-spawn bass that were pretty much just staged up on a bladed jig. These are not quite the conditions you want for that. I think a lot of that cloud cover that stuck around with us, mm -hmm. looking at this hummingbird bird's eye view, helped Todd Auten that, that bite out. It is, boy, it is high skies today compared to day number one of this tournament. Oh, it says uh, around noon it'll get partly cloudy from sunny. The forecast keeps changing. Man, you tell you get back into some of these backwater pockets and, and drains. Man, that water is clear. Said he told us this morning, tried those trees first thing, first thing out of the box today, and no go. It was lesser light.
a big difference on these fish down here. <clears throat> so these these little old gullies, they usually spawn, you know, up on them. But now they they will be pulled out here into little ditches. And uh, like I said, the clarity, super clear. I hadn't seen any on the beds yet, but I know um, in practice, I've seen some out deeper. But I figured some would move up here shallow, but they just don't seem like they wanting to come across that flat yet to get back in here. But we still might run across one back here somewhere. It's another bait I might try. See how a speed worm might work in here. <clears throat> See, a lot of guys who started the day in the top 10, Edo, Airy, Walters, Matsushita, having a little slower day today. Or a lot slower day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all four of our anglers from Japan did acquitted themselves pretty well. Ito's on two fish for four and a half. Matsushita's fallen to 31st with one fish, one and a half pounder. The area that Davy Height was in, Andrew Cook, is absolutely getting throttled right now. Every single pocket in that region of the lake. Yesterday it had some pressure. Well, a lot of those anglers that got burned yesterday up in the swamp, a lot of them have filtered in that region of the lake. And here's the best way to put it. Where Drew Cook, Polinick, Corey Johnston, Clifford Perch, uh, there's about another dozen boats really within a mile of them. They're going to have to burn it down today unless there is a massive wave to come up because it is getting hammered. And we kind of thought that this morning that, you know, with with 24 boats up in the swamp yesterday and virtually nobody and gone, nobody caught a, a good bag up there. They were going to have to disperse somewhere. Well, a lot of them are in that exact those exact pockets, in fact, today. Can conditions get better up in the swamp, though, where it'll turn back on? Uh, it depends on how much, you know, it's, it's probably filtering a little bit, I would guess, today. But, you know, we've got more rain expected, so. Otten still the man with the uh, biggest fish caught so far in these proceedings here at the Santee Cooper Lakes. 813. 15. 15. 815. 815. Finished second in the classic 2020. This veteran has been around, and you better believe he's got a plan to get it done here at the Santee Cooper Lakes. Todd Otten moves into second place here at the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes. When everything goes your way, you have days like this. I'm just gonna go back out there tomorrow and hit some of the same places and try to duplicate the same pattern I did today. I have a little offshore place I caught some of my fish and then, you know, I'm moving in shallow to fish trees and stuff and it just worked out today. You never know tomorrow. We're gonna try to get them again. Yeah, little one. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Closing in on the end of the first half of our fishing day, our eight hours of fishing at the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes here in Clarendon County. And we've got uh, the rest of the day to make their case for uh, fishing on Saturday. Got to be in the top 47 to do that. Drew Cook, who fell out of the lead after 31 pounds plus on day number one, is back on top again. Greg Hackney, strength of a good solid limit early on today. Todd Auten 
Jane in there in third place today. It's been slow though for Todd. So why don't we just catch you all up on it as we take this midday uh, uh, opportunity to catch you up on what's been going on with our Yamaha midday report, see? Yeah, why don't we do that, Tommy Sanders, and really taking a look at yeah. what has transpired in this tournament. Everything you're going to see so far here today, gang, for your Yamaha midday report yeah, is damage on Lake what? Marion. It's None of our leaders are fishing down in Moultrie. Will that change? Yeah, not looking that way so far. Todd Auden concentrating on scattered brush piles, five to seven feet of water, right. just a little migration area. A little bit Most of his damage on day number one was done with a out. spinner bait, suspending jerk bait, seeing a few transitions today. Switching and over to a drop shot, but a little bit, bit slower for Todd Auden. He said he's got one other stretch of very key cypress trees that so far today has not played and really if, from from a broad stroke picture of looking at the leaders in this tournament greg hackney todd auton drew cook it's getting in an area and saturating it not running around around not spreading yourself out greg hackney with a strike king rage bug 316 sounds weight which he said was very very key greg hackney definitely starting on the right stretch today one of the things that hackney told us is very very key to the cypress trees that he's concentrating on behind those right there there is a bank it's not one of these flooded forests all of hackney's big ones yesterday he said there has to be a shoreline you could not get in one of the giant giant cypress timber fields Greg Hackney with a big, big morning so far. And well, man with a big bag yesterday on day number one, Drew Cook took a little while to get going, catching this male about an hour ago. Lands this male, the female would set up right after the male was caught, landing this giant bass yeah, one. We are estimating right around seven pounds. Found that fish yesterday. And as we said it, all of these areas, this is fish number three for Drew, for Drew Cook, whether it's where Drew Cook is, Greg Hackney, Todd Auten, all of these areas are getting a ton of pressure. That is your Yamaha Midday Report. Well done. Let's get back out to Hank Cherry. He has stayed the course in this special area. He spent a lot of time in yesterday. He's been, he's made a bit of a move, though. Cody, not very big, but I'll measure him again. He's probably 17 inches. Yeah. It's three. <laughs> not like yesterday so far, but. Most of Cherry's damage yesterday, number one, most of his damage the first three hours of competition. Throwing a new bait, a Berkeley Crash Craw. Say that a few times real fast. Berkeley Crash Craw right there. Got the picture from Hank Cherry early this morning. He's kept him honest with a, with a general, you know, a soft plastic stick bait, wacky rigged and just not off to that start that we got to see yesterday with Hank Cherry. So many giants. Berkeley Crash Call for Hank Cherry. Basically today all I did was I did a bunch of sight fishing, casting the general around, wacky rig, just looking for fish. And then uh, pulled out a new Berkeley Cross, not out on the market yet, it's coming, it's pretty bad, and I caught every fish on it. My marshal can attest to it. I would go through a whole gamut of baits, come back to it, and that would be the one they bit. So that's the one I'm gonna throw. 
tomorrow, hopefully go out there and bust them up again. Just gotta go look for some new ones. I'm gonna go back to the same area probably. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna take my Berkeley Max scent chunk, put it on my jig and go up in the swamp and flip, flip trees. So either way, pretty confident about what's going on. Just ready to get back out there. Oh, what's going on in the background yeah, right there? Getting after whatever happened. Whatever yeah. Was going on. Tune somebody up and go grab some wood, boy. <laughs> grab some wood now. 27 pounds <laughs> yesterday for Hank Cherries. I have no doubt he can replicate that again. Just got to get things moving. I mean, He's got three little ones in the boat right now. He does. But if you notice, though, ring, 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 ring. That's what those are. Yeah. Uh, I'm not and we have seen good not, not things good. happen in the presence of those. Well, let's see if it happens for Brandon Polinick. I'm guessing it will. Boy, it seems like a lifetime ago seeing Brandon Polinick throwing a suspending jerkbait offshore in this tournament because that is, appears that is done. Which I think just the warming temp, Scott, pretty much has eliminated that so far. These fish have, we, we talked about it, this tur tournament was going to be a event of change. Everywhere. All right, so a little bit of the problem with the area Drew Cook, Corey Johnston, Clifford Perch, Brandon Polinick is these pad fields. There was about two or three boats in there yesterday. And I mean, it is a dadgum elite series party going on right around Potato Creek. Taking a look at it. And basically all of these anglers are hopscotching these pad fields. And the other thing that, you know, a lot of our viewers know this, a lot of what that pressure will do, a lot of these fish wanting to move up with all the pressure, a bunch of them will hold back. I mean, these little li lily pad bays are getting hammered by some of the best shallow water fishermen on the Elite Series. Back out the one and two, Cook and Hackney. And I'm having to fish like this too, because I, I want to see if there's a chance that, you know, maybe some new ones pulled up yesterday afternoon or, because I know I left a few male fish down through here yesterday, so. I left one right here yesterday. I don't know how big it was, but I, for some reason today, it, if it's there, I can't get it to bite. But I was several cast in yesterday. I don't know what took you so long, buddy. He was fired up. Pounder. Number four. Number four. Just need to be twice that size. That was it. That's right. That was a terrible one. We gotta do that over again. Uh, three pounder. Good. 
not ask for better sight fishing conditions here. Dang, I wish that female would have been there. Closing in on 50 pounds for a day and a half of fishing here. Exactly what I was and thinking. On, I was gonna on pace. Yeah. And they asked you, Z, he probably uh, didn't read off the exact numbers on his scale there. No. He didn't make sure. No, I don't. Sure would hate to miss out on a freebie. Does that sounds like somebody's breaking road off in the distance? Oh, yeah. Drew Cook. The number is about to go up when it registers uh, unofficially. Our Bass Track leaderboard, Drew Cook on top, Greg Hackley hanging in there, and all the rest are significant distance back, but uh, around here, things can change very, very quickly. Corey Johnston, Auden, and Carl Jockerson, what a tournament he's having. Take a quick break and be right back. Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Lost a good one right there yesterday. That's the reason I'm spending some time right there too. So I never when the hook never come through the bug, I pulled it out of the water right there under that dock. And it was a fat looking one like a female. It was a thick back fish. I didn't need it yesterday, but I could probably use it right now. warm in it. I mean it feels good you know far as like making them get active. You know see it's kind of I'm in that same situation like I was a while ago until one bites me I, I may be just fishing too slow but I got to get one to see you know what it takes to get it to bite to know if I need to speed up a little bit or Hazy. It would help me to get a bike. I could get my gait back going. You know, I mean, I could 
I'm kind of beating a dead horse, you know, I'm, to some extent, but then I'm like, but if I only caught, if I, if I get one big bite down through here, it was worth it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good area. I feel sure I didn't catch the biggest one living down through here yesterday, so. It's 11 o'clock, and I didn't have them yesterday till 12.50, so, yeah. you know, but I didn't fish this stretch till later, but I was fishing it right now, you know what I mean? We're... I don't need to burn myself out, do I? I figured I would need it, you know what I mean. Like I know I got off to a good start, but still. I... Hopefully we're in that period right now, that the calm before the storm.
That's exactly right. This one little eight pounder right now would be just right. I want to get in a hurry. I mean, I still I feel like I'm needing to speed up just a little bit, you know. The deal is I'll just blow through it and we'll leave, and then I can always make a pass on it if I feel like I need to later, you know. I'm just, I can't, I, I mean, I went a long time without a bite, you know. And I fished around where I thought there were some, too.
Like you just gotta get lucky and see him swim across back in there or something. Said I like the looks of that. It's not big, but I'll take them right now. Dude, he's fat though. Look at that chunk. Number three. Oh man, every little bit, you know? That was cool. First tree you come to. That's a good sign. Standalone tree. Man, something's different today. I mean, I'm just catching two pounders. I haven't caught two pounders in all of practice or yesterday. It's like you catch some, you catch one, and it's a you know, three to five usually. That's what it's been at least. Yeah. This looks good though. I feel confident I can catch another one in here. Shouldn't say that. A lot smaller than that up there. Yeah, see that's old Nemo. Look at that tail. It's just that's him. You got it all too. Too bad it wasn't a seven pounder. We'll just take what we can get right now. That is a limit. So. Well, we got we got the snake on the lie. They do. I mean, it's I mean, seems like prime time. One big old fat juicy one. At least catch one that would eat that snake, you know. Yeah, I guess I didn't realize how good I was. I just caught them all. Well, it makes sense. But I'm not going to like I said. Hmm. 
there was one right there. You see it? It wouldn't, you know, it wasn't a big one, but God, it was up there shallow. I've been looking for that, you know, one to move or whatever, not spook, but. I mean, conditions are prime time. We got that breeze, still got some shade. So I caught that big one yesterday off that next dock, and then I lost a good one, I think either on the next dock or the one past it. I'm ready for this trip to be done. <laughs> I'm antsy to make a move, but I'm like, man, you've already fished to this. Uh, I fished this far, I'm like, I might as well just finish it. But I am ready to get away from it. Yeah, we're going on down in there hooks snagged me and I got one treble through one finger and another treble through the through another finger so I had two of them in there and luckily I got it out it took me like 20 minutes uh, well I cut the hooks off the bait first and then I got the old braid out and yep dude that's slick you know, I tried taking the pliers to it first to see if I could back it out. Dude, there is no, that is not happening. No. <laughs> that braid though, man, that stuff. I uh I I don't think that one will help. I look, I don't think it will. But he was aggressive. He smoked it. I've been swimming it over all that grass, you know, and I don't think it'll sure. Yellow, black. What's in the black? Yes, Come on, buddy. 
No, I don't want to help that. I think that's the, well, let me look. I got that skinny one in there. I'll put them on white. Oh, really? Nice. I should have went ahead and hooked that one up for right now. I know skinny in there. I had to look, I just couldn't remember. Ooh, he smoked it though. I needed to jerk, you know what I mean? I'm like, wow, I've worked for that one. It's probably about like that one this morning, I'm off though. Swim off the bank. about seeing that. So that's the dock I caught the big one off of, but it was out on the end, you know, deeper. And it's the only one I've, you know, caught like that yesterday. It's funny, they got all them rod hangers and all, but I never noticed any brush. Ooh, golly, what is that? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Mm. Yeah, it's got a catfish on it, I think, or something. Let me try to just troll under it. See, something got it and swam over. You want to just put it over your head? Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome to our on-location coverage here in the low country of South Carolina. Clarendon County, South Carolina, and we are on an incredible body of water that has so much history with the Bassmasters. Santee Cooper Lakes is the site of our third stop for the 2022 Bassmaster Elite Series. 
And a guy that normally doesn't catch him till day number two, Drew Cook, is still atop the leaderboard. Actually, not still. He is once again atop the leaderboard. He slipped a little bit with Greg Hackney's charge this morning. But look out, Corey Johnson trying to shed that title of being the only Canadian not to win an Elite Series event. That is our playing field. Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. Santee Cooper Lakes. And one reason that anglers get so excited coming to this part of the country is just simply because of giant, giant fish. Welcome in here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm joined by, speaking of giants, I am joined by Bassmaster Classic Champion, two-time Angler of the Year, Bass Fishing Hall of Famer, Davey Height. I'm Dave Mercer. I just moved the hole that makes the words. But, man, the big thing that's happening this week is the big bite, and this is your backyard. Yeah, it, it really is, and it's it's great to see the Bassmaster Elites here at the right time of year. You know, we were here in the fall 2020. Uh, not the best fishing time of the year, but right now it is. And you could see, watching the way in uh, – you, you called out a lot of big numbers yesterday, a lot of 20-plus pound stringers, just absolutely incredible. It's not often you have a weigh-in, and people weigh in 18 pounds, and they're like, ah, nothing to see here. They don't want to hold those fish up because we are in a special, special playground for the third stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series. And the big question coming into this event, Davey, was will we break the century mark? Well, I think uh, Drew Cook is certainly, certainly headed to that. Todd Alton had a great day yesterday. Todd Alton fishing a little different. You know, Drew Cook is looking at all his fish. You see Todd out here offshore fishing brush piles and some standing timber, a few stumps, but a lot of those older brush piles he said he had found years ago. Five to seven, eight feet of water, spinner bait, mixing up a little bit with a chatter bait, doing different things with Todd Alton. Yesterday, a lot better starting head today. You see right now only 10 pounds a day. But he was a little... He was a little apprehensive, I guess, uh, about today and, and not knowing what would happen. But Todd Alton has a lot of experience here. He's fished here at Santee Cooper a lot. And when asked, do you do well here? He's like, I either have a real good tournament or a real bad one. So luckily for Todd and for us watching that he's having a good tournament here. But mixing it up a lot, not just fishing one thing like Drew Cook or, or you know, Caleb Kupal is fishing trees only. But Todd Alton just kind of getting it done, being very versatile. Catching up with our Toyota Midday Report, and nobody better to jump to next than the hack attack, Greg Hackney, and he was literally on the attack this morning. He absolutely was, and you could tell he was he was really feeling this morning. Got off to a good start, uh, took the lead for a while on Bass Track unofficially. Greg Hackney doing a, a good job here. Fishing trees, using a, a striking rage bug, 316 south sinker just fishing very slow and methodically. And there are a lot of people fishing around Greg Hackney and simply he is just out fishing. Greg Hackney fishing in a way he is very, very comfortable in fishing. Said that this body of water reminds him of home, the way he grew up and anywhere where, it's, where there's cypress trees, yeah. Greg Hackney is a factor. Yeah, when he's got a flipping stick in his hand using a, a jig or a, a a crawfish type bait, then he's always somebody you better watch. You better watch out for. But here's somebody you better watch out for. We have learned in just a few years. He was rookie of the year just what three years ago, Dave? Yeah. About that. But Drew Cook is one of the best sight fishermen in the country. Never been out of the top 20 in Angler of the Year, and actually three of those four years he's been in the top 10. And when he's looking at him, that is what he is best at. Yeah, just yeah. absolutely incredible. Like Greg Hackney, Drew Cook is in a. You know, he's 15 miles away from Greg Hackney, but most of the boats in the upper lake, Lake Marion, are in the creeks that Drew Cook and Greg Hackney are in. And they're not all catching them nearly as good as those two. They've simply just outperformed in the areas that they've been in. Had a nice moment on the dock this morning. Got surprised by his wife and his little boy, you know, just a few months old. And uh, man, but his mind, he, it was all hugs and kisses, but his mind was on uh, other babies that are spawning <laughs> not so babies but speaking of big finishes here he won the last time we were back he back here in 2020 and now over to the prodigy brandon polinick it seems like he's it we always watch him and it looks like he's struggling then all of a sudden boomsies he's yeah. back on top of the leaderboard make something happen the last time we were here with the, the elites on Santee Cooper, obviously he won, but he just battled his way up the leaderboard each and every day, doing something totally different. You know, caught that last big fish to seal oh, a deal up. for him yeah. on a drop shot. Here we go. In the mouth. <laughs> just like that other one. Dude, that was the wildest thing I've ever seen. 
Lisa's calling me. <laughs> oh. Hello? Lisa, I'm assuming he's talking about tournament director. I think that's the only one. Call, he'd be legally able to answer. Put it on speakerphone, Brandon. <laughs> Don't you watch reality shows? Okay. Sounds good. I will find him and let him go. Okay. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Yep, see you guys. Bye. So I'm hearing he had a question about a fish. I mean, probably where it was hooked. You know, it was, he probably sent a picture. Um, and uh, the fish, when you're sight fishing, every single fish has to be hooked outside the mouth. Inside. Inside the mouth, obviously. Or it might have been hooked outside <laughs> of the mouth. But he, you know, there's so many fine lines there. We've yes. seen that several times this year where our tournament director, Lisa Talmadge, has to make a call. But you can do it through cell phone pictures. Yeah, you, you can. And then the other thing is you, when you're visually fishing for a bedding bass you know other times you can hook a fish on the outside of the mouth so there can also be a question whether that fish was actually on the bed or not now over to the back-to-back -back Bassmaster classic champion the champ champ hank cherry i'm not leaving oh i've said that many times you see a big one you say I'm not leaving. I'm going to catch her. And hopefully he catches it real soon. There's but something your big butt will bite. For me, sometimes two hours later, I'd say, I've got to leave now. Hank Cherry with a slower start today than yesterday, obviously. But it looks like he's on a big one here now. And you can make up ground in a hurry. Several of the anglers that had over 20 pounds yesterday said it all went down in an hour. There's waves going by, I couldn't tell. Sure, I am on two giant bass, they're right here. And at this point, if I can catch them both, it's gonna be a very good day. If I don't catch them, I'm probably going to miss the cut, but it's hard to leave to this size that won't leave. Their, their bed is off to the right of this tree, but they won't, they will not leave. Um, they actually bit my worm when we were coming through here looking, and uh, I just got up too close on the tree, so I know they'll bite. I'm just trying to go through the baits that I've been catching them on, just trying to get one to react. I mean, it might be now, it might be 3.30, but one of them's coming in the boat, at least. I gotta have one of them, but I need both of them. Both that of them will put me at here over 40 pounds and allow me to go fishing for the rest of the time. This is pretty frustrating. Hank Cherry working a fish, but we're hearing more about the Brandon Polnick situation. Uh, Davey, what's the word? So it sounds like that Brandon was sight fishing for bedding bass, and those fish have to be, like you explained, hooked on the inside of the mouth, and it has to be verified by your marshal, or in his case, his cameraman. And the fish came unhooked, and we've all seen this. We've had it happen. Unhooked as it was coming in the boat and, and landed in the floor of the boat. But So there was no way for them to 100% you know, verify that the fish was hooked inside the mouth. So he called Lisa and said, uh, you know, here's the deal, what I just explained. And she went back and looked at some footage from the camera, and they could not tell for sure that the fish was hooked inside the mouth. So she called him back and said he had to release the fish. So just playing by the rules, doing the right thing, and not... Not making any mistakes that you might regret later. Pretty amazing. 
I mean, it's simple. Just everyone sends videos to people every day. But you would just see how our tournament director can make a call just by that quick by yeah. seeing it. There's no hearsay, and it's pretty amazing. Do a great job. They over, do a great job. Over to our day one leader, Drew Cook, searching for his very first Elite Series title. And as you said, Davey Height, a young, young career. But just showing how good his career is. It like, seems like he's overdue pounds. for a win. Yeah. Um, but I, I just need to find one more, one more female. To, I said a 25 pound average would do it, and I need to have a buffer for, for tomorrow because tomorrow the weather's supposed to be, pretty bad. Um, I even heard somebody say this morning that. They thought they might cancel tomorrow. It was going to be that bad. I don't think it's going to be that bad, but I also haven't looked at the weather. You know, we'll, we'll worry about Saturday when Saturday comes, but it's taken a lot longer to, uh, to catch him today. Um, you know, you, you saw this morning I had to leave and come back to a couple of them, but still, I mean, it's one or 12 o'clock, so, I mean, we've got, we got time. I mean, like I said, we just need one more. Um, seeing a bunch, bunch of new males today, actually, um, since I left that one, that one pocket, I've seen a lot, lot more new males. So that's, that's good to see. Um, it means that you know they're still coming. So hopefully, the females will keep coming as well. Um, it would have been textbook if my my other seven pounder would have been there. It would have just been like I wrote it up last night, but, you know, that's part of it. Sure, it was on a pretty bright bed. Um, one of the locals probably, probably found her yesterday afternoon, but we're gonna keep on chugging, keep looking. Um, you know, if it, if it upgrades, you know, by more than a pound or so, I'll probably stop and catch them. So we'll, hopefully, I caught one female in this pocket right here yesterday. Um, so hopefully we can go in here and catch, catch one today too. And then we'll be, you know, right where we need to be. We've got a, a two pounder to cull, so, you know, everything, you know, there's plenty of room there to, to advance, so. That's the plan. Just gonna keep throwing this little swim jig around and <clears throat> Keep dobbing that fighting frog when we find one. And hopefully we can connect with one more big one. Drew Cook's closest pursuer as of day number one, an elite series champion. The always quiet, but always deadly. Caleb Kufal slid up yesterday. No, no big hoopla, no hype. But man, he catches giants. Had a great day yesterday. Said he only had eight bites, but like you said, the right ones, the giants. Beautiful aerial view right there of the area he's fishing. He's across the lake, basically straight across the lake from Drew Cook. A very, very popular area there where he's at this time of the year. I'm gonna get right down here. Wow. When you hear the line singing through the water, that is music to your ears. It makes me all tingly, Davey. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yes, <sighs> sir. As soon as they left. And so does that. Woo, look at that. Look at that jig. That thing is down there. Man, that thing is so far down there, I can't even reach it. That's a good one. I'm gonna weigh him here quick. 
That'll change your day. It's probably five something. This is third keeper. Six five. and a half. No. Woo! That's pretty cool. We're not done. Not yet. All right. Ooh, he gave me the runaround. He wasn't even really on that tree. He was about four foot off of it. Ooh, I'm shaking. <laughs> That is pretty cool. Come on, we can make something happen here yet today. That's a game changer though. At least for the day that I've had, so it's been a it's been a rough grinder of a day. This is when they started to bite yesterday, though, so... Alright, let's get another one. Wow, what a... Uh, what an incredible bite there, and an incredible moment for our sport. Look at this. I mean, you used to have to wait for a magazine to come out to find who won. Aerially, he's covered with a giant bite uh, from multiple different angles, uh, from above him and right on the boat. And Davy Height, what does that bite say to you? Oh, he's in a he's in a good area. He's he's fishing a jig, heavy line. You know, that's exactly what what I would be doing if I was out there this week. Uh, you see a lot of people using spinner rods, a lot of people just sight fishing. But with the weather changes, uh, you know, I just I really like what what Hackney's doing, what Caleb's doing. You know, what Drew Cook was able to do yesterday and is doing today is real impressive. We'll just see what this weather does for trying to sight fish here four days in a row in March. Two box, Caleb Kufal and Brandon Polnick. Sitting in third and 12th respectively. Brandon started out yesterday morning on fire, jumped out to a big lead early fishing offshore with a jerk bait and uh, was doing that some today. We were out on the water and saw him, but he's a little bigger than two pounds shallower now. Oh, oh, perfect. It's like Wes Logan. They're just moving in like crazy. A little ball of hate well, over his I mean, shoulder. I knew I was in the right area, but I was catching a lot of staging fish, and that just started going away. Like, I just was not feeling it. And so I just started moving up shallow, you know, just inside from where I thought those fish were going to go spawn. And, I mean, they're swimming around like Wes is catching them. There's guys, guys all over that are wrapped or down, you know, locked down, looking at them like they're just, that seems like how Santee works. These fish just, they'll go from off the bank to the bank like overnight. And that was kind of what I was worried about um, with what I was doing yesterday. Wasn't sure that it would hold up. And so we've kind of made an adjustment. I've had some interesting things happen today but we still got lots of time, which is good. Still got five hours. I'm seeing a few. I haven't seen, I've only seen one good one. And she was back there, but just real, real spooky, not acting right. And right here, I got a, I don't know, two, two and a half pounder that he's not locked on anything, but he does, he's not leaving either. And he's looked at my bait a few times Showing a little interest, like right now. Oh, <laughs> golly. He like nose down on it for a sec and then backed up. Just trying to figure out like where his, they all got a spot. 
they all have a little sweet spot where it's like, they'll bite. Heck, Wes, you're gonna fill your limit out off one bed. <laughs> we just watched Wes Logan catch like a five pounder. And then he said he was fishing for the male. And he caught one. I was like, well, that's bigger than what you're saying. And he said another one just swam up there. Like, just showed up and he caught it. So he still got the other male in there. It's pretty funny. He's a good kid, and I can call him a kid because he's younger. You don't. Look at our top three right now. Drew Cook, Greg Hackney, cool. and Caleb Kufal. God, for a second I was hopping. All three. And I was like very, very different parts <laughs> just, of the lake, but all three in Lake Marion. Because just all of a sudden, I was like, I could see that stump. I just pit, dropped down on there, and then all of a sudden it just went. So this weather that has become a topic all of a sudden. I mean, I thought we were in paradise. What What is the weather forecast for tomorrow, Davey? And is it really something we need to be concerned about? Yeah. Where Drew so Cook said, I'm gonna fish right here guys, we're talking on the dock about it being canceled? I think those were guys that only had about three pounds, four pounds yesterday. Well, yeah, it gets canceled, <laughs> canceled for half the field always <laughs> on semifinal Saturday. That's... Thus but, the name, semifinal Saturday. But no, uh, the, the forecast is for strong winds tomorrow. But it depends on which forecast you believe. I mean, there's you know, one that I saw, that, you know, 12 to 15 with gust to 20 to 25. But then I saw another one that was more like 17 to 20 with gust 25 to 30. So we'll have to see. We'll know a lot more about it tomorrow morning. But there's also some uh, a, a very thin line, but some storms that, that uh, is supposed to come through here this afternoon about 4.35 o'clock. And the last flight doesn't check in until 5, so that could could make a difference. But one thing about those storms moving in for a, a site fisherman like Drew Cook, maybe that's not what you want this afternoon, but, man, they really bite when you start, if you throw in moving baits, chatter baits, spinner baits, uh, swim baits, that sort of thing, swim jigs. You can uh, – they – there might be some real good catches in the last hour today if that weather does move in. Did you talk to anyone that really got them in the afternoon? Because we had that same window yesterday, but with it being overcast and then it just kind of starting to feel right at 2 o'clock yesterday, I kept thinking, you know, a 3.30 check-in, a 5 o'clock check-in on this body of water this time of year could make a huge difference. But even talking to the camera guys... There wasn't a lot. A lot of people got fish at the very end of the day, but they weren't people in those later flights. Really surprised me. A few that I talked to, but not as many. You're exactly right. I thought that um, yesterday afternoon, that four to five o'clock window could be huge. But Drew Cook already had his fish three or four hours before that. So he had found a lot of his fish, did nothing but look on uh, Monday and Tuesday, the, the final two days of practice. Did not fish, just looked, and he had, you know, he had located enough to, to get off to a great start. Now he's staying in this area. He says he's basically going to kind of burn it. There are a lot of other anglers there, and then plans to move to new water uh, tomorrow. But it's the one thing about burning an area on, on the Santee Cooper Lakes. If they're coming, you can't burn it. If, I mean, <laughs> if they're coming, they, it will replenish overnight. A lot of lakes we go to, that doesn't happen. But especially in the lower lake, if uh, if they're coming for multiple days in a row, it's not like, okay, I called them, I need to move to another area. They'll, they'll replenish, no doubt about it. Could there be a case to be made that, that Drew Cook, although along – in the Elite Series, around the anglers, around the industry, I think he's very well respected. People know his skills. But when you think about it, never been out of the top 20 in Angler of the Year and only been out of the top 10 once since he joined the Elite Series, he probably he may be one of the most underrated pros out there. I agree. Because I agree. he's a quiet guy, you know what I mean? He doesn't. I agree.
you think about only being out of the top ten angler a year one year out of four, that's very impressive. That is very impressive. And no different than when we go north and we talk about the Johnstons fishing the way they are best at. This is definitely what Drew Cook is best yes. at. And, and, you know, this, the terrain here, the, the uh, contour here, the cypress trees, this is what Drew grew up fishing. Very similar to South Georgia, Northern Florida. something i've noticed he's he's obviously just looking now he's not even casting but he doesn't go down the bank on trolling motor on 100 percent. he he moves steady but he's not just plowing going super super fast like you see some people try to do i guess a double-edged sword you're going faster you can cover more water but you're also going to have a lot harder time stopping and stopping subtly uh, that and i think you know maybe you those fish feel you coming yeah. more when that trolling motor is you know turned up first and third on the screen right now drew cook and caleb kufal i've had several of the pros tell me too that you want to know the extreme that these anglers go to they don't even they'll never go on and off on the trolling motor. They'll always dial right. it back down because it, it just makes more noise business. on and off. Yep, absolutely. It seemed like Caleb was having a slower day today, but he's got four fish. It's midday. He only had eight bites yesterday, so really he's right on par with yesterday. Caleb Kufal absolutely dominated, absolutely dominated on Lake Gunnersville last year to take his first Elite Series win. And this is definitely the kind of body of water where you don't need to get a lot of bites, just get the right bites. This has been fun, Davey. I like hanging out here watching people catch fish, but I love trivia, especially Striker Daily Trivia. And let's have a look at our question. On what day did Jeff Gustafson catch the Big Bass of 2020 Elite here? A, well, day one, B, day two, C, day three. You can see the pattern here. <laughs> and D, day four. Davey Hyde, I'll let you stew on that. You got a guess right away? Huh? A, day one. All right, I'm going to go day two. I uh, Maybe. We'll find out after the break. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome back to our on-location coverage. And we left you a striker daily trivia. It's my favorite part of the show. It's... An opportunity for, once again, Davey Height to prove he is a better individual than I am. Here is the question. On what day did Jeff Gustafson catch the big bass of 2022 Elite here? A, B, C, or D, and they correspond with day one, two, three, or four. I remember it, and it was one or two, but now that I, I think you might be right with two. Let's see what well, we got. Well, what did you pick? I picked one. I picked one. Kind of straddling I'm, no, I'm, I'm sticking with one, but. All right. I'll, I'll go day two. Survey says, gosh, I, I'm not good in real life, but I am <laughs> wonderful at Striker Daily Trivia. Gustafson caught the Phoenix Boats Big Bass, nine pounds, seven ounces on day two. And look at how I convinced you I'm that defeated. I had no idea. I'm defeated. You are defeated. Ghost. You do remember it, though, don't you? But And I knew it was one or two. But Yeah, I remember he made a big chart. That's all I remember. Look at our leaderboard. There's our top 10. And in fourth place, Corey Johnston. Trying to make a charge up that leaderboard and trying to get his first Elite Series victory. But we're going to join him right now with our VMC on point. And there you see right there. Look at how his day went, Davey Height. 
Yeah, Corey Johnson went off to a good start yesterday. He was in that same area around Drew Cook, and today he's there also having a little better start today than yesterday. He had a good day yesterday, but uh, it's only about noon, and Corey Johnson off a good start. You see a three-pounder, four-pounder, three, five, 412 at 1148 and very similar not quite the way that that core uh drew cook had yesterday but really no big ones he's got a lot of room to grow there even though he's got his five fish limit get rid of the three pounder and a three and a half pounder he could have that upper 20 maybe a 30 pound stringer this afternoon that's your vmc on point with candace corey johnson and there he is on the stage yesterday and you talked about they, you know, him and his brother Chris, they love doing this. And, yeah. You know, there's shallow pads where he was and some reeds. It looked just like home, I guarantee you. Now over to Greg Hackney, a six time Bassmaster winner, just fished his 16th Bassmaster Classic. And boy, he looks at home here today. Greg Hickton, we still ain't got Hickton quite up there to the those trees apart. Short, you know, where I got bit at. Interesting to see Caleb fishing. Offshore trees, basically. No no dry land, let's say. Not even the island that he's around. He's off several hundred yards off of the island. And Greg Hackney said that he really wants to be close to the shoreline. Both fishing cypress trees, but one wanting to be close to the shoreline. And it had been really warm here the last week of February, like in the 80s for a week. Uh, you know, I, I've caught several fish in the last hour or so, but they've all been small, you know, just buck bass. I, I've, uh, I've moved on down in this bay where I'm at a little farther in it. I had a couple bites on down here and I, um, I said, well, I'd give that a try because I never fished it yesterday. And one of them was a quality bite and I only had two bites, but it was on that first day of practice when, uh, I mean, conditions were not good at all, you know, because we just had that blizzard blow through uh, the day before, so. I felt like there was potential for this to be a little better because so that stretch up there where I've had all the bites that I had four bites in practice and this stretch I had two. So if it's as half as good as that, it'll be good. There's a lot of this in here that looks the same, but it's it was it seems like where there's a, a little bit of depth you know, closer to it. It's the reason I skipped a bunch of it and come on back here because there's a place where there's a little bit of, right up here in front of us where the water gets a little deeper. Now it's not deep, but it's deeper. And that kind of seemed to be the the areas they, they liked. I stopped short of it just a little bit just to make sure they, you know, hadn't spread out. It's all good spawning stuff. It's all big, this, all, this whole bay is sand or, you know, uh, not a lot of vegetation in here to mess the bottom up. Uh, I mean, so literally they could spawn anywhere, but they seem to like where that little bit of depth is, so. Yeah, 
They're having a party up here on that rig. Reva, Reva. Always a party with Greg Hackney. <laughs> Top three represented right there. Cook, Hackney, and Kufal. Top three, and like I mentioned a little earlier, all three spread out in different sections of Lake Marion. All three, you know, Drew Cook sight fishing. Greg Hackney and Caleb Kufal fishing creature baits and, and jigs, but Greg Hackney wanting to be in those bays and close to the shoreline where you can see Caleb there. He's he's on these trees that are way offshore. If we do get the high winds and storms that some people are talking about tomorrow, which one of those patterns holds up more likely? Uh, it would be most difficult for Drew Cook. I would just suggest uh, I would fish the same areas if I were Greg or Caleb. I would just maybe change baits, uh, fish something making, you know, vibration, moving water. You don't see any boats in the picture other than these three anglers, but there, there are lots of fishermen around all three of these guys. They're, they're, they're not fishing, you know, alone. And Santee Cooper Lakes are similar to Florida. If you're not around some people and you're not catching anything, you probably need to move in a hurry. But these guys are just, they're just masters at what they do. Uh, we've seen Caleb, you know, with a flipping stick in his hand, do great things. And obviously we've all seen Greg Hackney many, many times with flipping, pitching a creature bait or a jig and then through Cook and, in the four years we've been watching like one of the leagues. Up about five or six when you talk about a sight fishing tournament, you're going to be talking about Drew Cook being in the mix. Why is Santee Cooper Lakes, why is it so good here, Davey? You know, like it doesn't matter what conditions. I mean, the anglers talked about a tough briefish was, but you, it, you are always going to see giant bags here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just by what you see in the, in the pictures here, this three box, a lot of cover, and there's not as much cover here now, especially vegetation as there has been, but still, just a lot of cover, and and largemouth bass, they need cover, but then also. You know, the, the bait fish, the crawfish, the, you know, everything that they feed on, the bluegill, the, uh, they all need cover also. And just, just a lot of food and cover makes for a good fishery. Greg Hackney said on stage he wants to move here. <laughs> I'm sure the fine folks of Clarendon County would accommodate him. absolutely absolutely i grew up on lake murray you know the center of the state and it's near and dear to my heart and i will always love lake murray but you know i it's a if you like to target big largemouth bass santee cooper is addictive how important is that davy just what you just said the targeting large uh, it sounds oh, foolish but like if you look at somebody from up north i mean they catch a lot of five pounders but they don't spend a lot of time catching eights yeah. and nines to win tournaments you have to do that here you have to do if you look back at every every tournament john c land right here in clarendon county has a tournament you know at least from mid -Janu january on you look back at the last three four five six weekends it's over 25 pounds you you can't win tournaments here in the spring of the year, catching three and four pounders. It's uh, 25 to 30, 31 pounds, uh, sometimes even more than that. It's fun to catch numbers of fish, but you have to target big fish here on Santee Cooper Lakes. Oh, oh, oh. We, we have a Skeeter Boats big fish alert. David Williams, big fish alert, seven pound, two ounce. 
big fish there for David Williams. Game changer there. Game changer there. And just like we talk about anglers up north almost disrespecting the smallmouth because you've caught so many of them, I think you see that with – and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, you you have to have a healthy disrespect yes. for the fish. You can't be scared about losing it. And you see people like Drew Cook, Greg Hackney, Lee Livesey, when we go to Fork and yep. places like that, people that are just used to an eight-pounder doesn't make them freak out as much. Yeah, and, and just like Drew Cook yesterday, getting off, getting those several big fish in his live well, then you, you see those three-pounders. You see the males that he's talking about that, you know, a lot of those are two- and three-pound bass. You don't even slow down. You don't think about them. But if you don't have one or two or three in a live well and it's 10 o'clock, you know you're on Lake Marion, you got to have 20-plus pounds to do well, but you still can't help but stop and catch that two-and-a-half pounder. And it's, it just really consumes your day. It consumes your time. But you don't want to go in with you know, with six pounds, but, but really going in with 10 pounds is, is almost as bad. It, it really is. It, to, to do well here, you've got to have 15-plus pounds. When I say do well, that, that's to cash a check in almost any tournament here. And it looks like our cut is going to be about that, 15, 16 pounds a day. Well, I'll be honest. That Skeeter Big Fish alert, uh, it, it, it scared the bejesus out of me, <laughs> maybe, Hyde. I mean, I, I, I hadn't heard that sound before. But one thing you're going to hear is the sound of giant, giant fish all day long because we are just getting to the best part of the day. And the question going into this event, will we see the century mark get beaten? Well, at the halfway point of this tournament, not even at the halfway point, at the halfway point of day number two, Drew Cook is already halfway there at the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Forging on into the final hours, final three hours of fishing for our Flight One Anglers of the 94 full field that's out there today in the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite. At Santee Cooper Lakes, there are some anglers who will be fishing all the way to 5 o'clock in a later flight. That would include one Greg Hackney, who's made a, made a note of that for us today. So uh, that may afford him some, uh, you know, some prime catching time. It certainly uh, proved to be that way in Bark Zona yesterday. Exactly, Tommy, and really, this is ex pretty much identical to what we got to see yesterday. Really, the late day bite. If you looked at that top 10 leaderboard, Clifford Perch, Perchy Perchenstein, making big moves, climbing into our top five unofficially. Back out to Greg Hackney, Bassmaster Live. Pretty nice one. Wasn't a big one, but it might have helped. I don't know. I, I, man, I, I, was, I tried to get right before I swung, you know? Hey, I, I knew he was that. on there. I just kept reeling, trying to get the line tight for that reason so it wouldn't be, but I didn't have it tight. I thought it was tight, but it wouldn't. I was like, just, I should have reeled more. I, should, I just about need to reel down on them to where they're bending the rod before I ever set the hook to make sure that, you know, because they're just that spawning fish bite, you know, it's a different. I ain't gonna bite again. I don't got too close. But, but they got bass back in here, looks like. That's the word on the street anyway. That's good because, he, but the funny thing is he's, right before my waypoint <laughs> you know what i mean like not it was right there so who his Ooh. second big fish what? of the day he's got an eight four now he just added a seven five he's up to 24 pounds four ounces on the day from 37th to fifth place Oof. with with a two pounder yeah. still in his live well. A lot of, lot of move, a lot of room to move for Clifford Perch today. 
He's hit dirty 30 before. Heard those BFAs were splashing all through our midday break with Dave and Davey. Wow. It's fun to catch numbers of fish, but you have to target big fish here on Sandy Cooper Lakes. <laughs> oh, 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 we have a Skeeter Boats big fish alert. David Williams, big fish alert, seven pound, two ounce. Yeah. <laughs> he got terrified from the BFA as well, yeah. as all of us do at well, times. Yeah, I'm, it, I'm, as, I keep thinking it's an air raid or something. Yeah, we start evacuating the building. You'll see. Oh, there Ooh. you see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see. How can you prepare for something like that? About the first mishap we've seen with Greg Hackney today, and really, it's kind of been a little bit of a grimy day for Hackney since the first 45 minutes of competition today. Drew Cook's got his limit now. Still hanging in there. First place by a good margin. If you'd like to get rid of that two pound, six ounce fish, maybe even both those three, three O's. <laughs> Didn't see that one there. Batteries are going out. You're being a very good fish. I appreciate that. Another three pounder. Corey Johnston, he's got a 580, just landed his third fish, just under five pounds. He's up to 23 in second place. Well. to that rage bug that Hackney's flipping right there. Color is summer craw. That's actually what the majority of what he put on the scales yesterday came on that color. Pretty much everything that he caught earlier today was on June bug. Tommy, I'll throw to you again. Yeah. You called it yesterday that we'd see a 30 pound bag. Do we again today? Uh, I'm saying no, not today. 29. Saying no. 29. Today. Okay. And you called the top 10 all in the 20s yesterday. 
came yeah, true. Does, I, that, I, does that happen today? I think so, and I think actually, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go as far as to say, biggest bag of the tournament today. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, I know. That's what makes a horse race. Dude, it is. It's too perfect, man. It's too good. I seen there is a pretty good line of storms going to be coming through. That's really right around weigh-in time. It yeah, looks like it happens a lot. My boy, those big stringers, all in the region of. Uh oh, picture yeah, time. I mean, there. that's a slouch too. Oh my god! Oh, that's what you, oh no. One of a gun. A couple of guns right there. Yeah. Getting it done. Yeah. Big guys in the house. And we said that we would definitely see that this time of year on Santee, man. It is a popular destination for a lot of fishermen this time of year. And this is this is like the primo weekend, the best weekend of the year so far, right? Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Tomorrow, a little, a little weather, but man, why not, why not get out there today? That's what these guys are saying. Man, it'll be interesting to see what Drew Cook does tomorrow. It is not going to be the most sight fishing conducive conditions that boat right there likes to go get up in the junk mm -hmm. they have, they've staked out a spot there y'all got a big tournament today no just, just playing around oh okay Drew Cook checking it. I got 20 Soft pounds. Serve. I got two little ones. Caught 31 pounds in here yesterday. Oh boy. Oh boy. Well, that's part of it this time of year. Okay. Everybody out having a time, having fun. Welcome to Bassmaster Live. I caught a seven something about where your boat is this morning. Where you from? South Georgia. I appreciate it. It was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're from. It was awkward. No. <laughs> that, that is part of the playing field. It is part of it and we, we like listen we brought that up the first 10 minutes of Bassmaster Live yesterday it's high skies sunny in the spring man there's gone now
Get me out of this cove right now, Donna. No, Get me out of there. No, you like the I want to be stuff. there. Come on now. You oh, love being no. in the middle of all that. That's, that was cool. I do, too. No, I don't want to. All spicy and whatnot. Not too far away, of course, as he has been all day, is Brandon Polony. Come on. Still trying to figure him out today. It never Something ends. Big up there running <laughs> bait around. Oh, he's coming. It's on the pad. Come on. That was awesome. So Get out of there. Oh, pull the frog out. <laughs> Throw the frog. Get a bite. Okay. That was awesome. I started reeling it back because I wasn't seeing anything. I saw that wake and I stopped it. Great Ooh. shot. Great shot right there. I thought it was bigger than that when it blew up though. I tightened my drag on my frog rod a little bit. Seen him actually hook that pad right there. I don't know if that was the same one or not. The, the one that ate on the bank acted a lot bigger. I don't, that could have been the male and the, the one before was the female or something. Whew, got my heart pumping. Really, what really cool fish catch. On. That would make sense. Let's see if we can push up there and find us a little something. For uh, uh, Tommy and the whole three pounder, Tommy and the whole production trailer got a note from the Scorpion. Karen Zona said, oh. "I'd like to see that boat of those two guys roll into the bay that Hackney's fishing and see how well that conversation goes." <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't been pretty. It's actually been the opposite of pretty. But I'm, I'm seeing fish. Which is a good thing. The bed. Seeing, oh, there's a fish right there. Is that her? It's gotta be her. That's, that one's way bigger than the one we caught. Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's two of them sitting right there. There's a male, like a male just sitting in the pads. And then there's another one cruising around. Brandon Pollock. Ah. We could do a little side fishing, throw a frog as well. That was a little stalker that waited under that pad for that one to come out. Yeah, it was. That was really cool. Drew Cook, still unofficially on top. Well, come on. Yeah, he's on top by a big margin. Corey Johnston, Greg Hackney, Caleb Kufall, Clifford Perch, Todd Otten, Cox, Webster mm. Perry rounding out the top ten. Steve Kennedy I'll in I'll tell you what's well. starting to get a little bit hot, oh. Tommy Sanders. Oh, you're right. Oh, the Yeti hot seat now is the 40 yeah. cut. That's appropriate. Yeah, you're feeling the heat now. If you uh, if you know where you are, you're below 40, 47th place. Gary Klaus, Kyle Welcher, gonna have to get on a stick there. Lee Livesey, Jay Shakura. A lot of people had Scott Tanaberry picked in this one. He's right down there below Shakura. So uh, a lot of nail biting between now and the end of the day. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Cannot wait to see what transpires this afternoon. Things are changing all through this tournament so far. This Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes and the fish have been moving. The fish have been calling the shots. And the guys who have done their best to keep up with them, to stay on them, to be where they 
where they're headed are the ones who have prospered. You can see them listed right there. <laughs> Two big movers, Johnston and Perch, Z, this afternoon. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. And here's the interesting thing is Drew Cook, Corey Johnston, Clifford Perch, really Drew Cook and Corey Johnston, they're fishing about, oh, let's call it within a thousand yards of each other all day long today and absolutely cannibalizing that area for all, all it's worth amongst other people. Mm -hmm. And that was so awkwardly oh. awkward. <laughs> Good stuff, Fastmaster Live. Good Absolutely, stuff. yes. All are welcome on our public lake. That's right. Oh, now. Get on that. Back out to Drew Cook. And again, Drew Cook said, no hard cover this whole gig yesterday and today if you notice it's been all lily pad oriented like i don't understand why he won't eat it How about a biggin? Pat Schlapper, nine pounds, 12 ounces on Bass Track. Good. Caught a big one late yesterday. Oh boy. Jumps him over 20 pounds at 21 and in sixth place. From 20, 50 at 18, 12 on day one. Twenty-pound okay. days are starting to populate day two now, just like uh, the prediction there, Z. I think he had a seven-pounder on Bass Track at 4:06. One of the latest big fish catches. Austin Felix had one about ten minutes later, five-pounder or so. Yeah, let's take a little peek. Ooh. That is a sizzler. That is a Western sizzler right there. Oh. TH Marine Weather Watch is uh, we've got a, a line of storms coming. It looks like we're going to be, for the most part, pretty clear for Bassmaster Live. But, boy, it's going to be potentially, unless it comes to that low country and kind of tapers out, which could happen. Uh, it's a pretty good line of storms coming around our way in today. Yeah. TH Marine Weather Watch. A little bit more of that tomorrow, Tommy. If they go yep. fast, they might get it in before it hits. Maybe. Okay. Oh, that is a blue whistle right. right there. I'll boat out and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Somebody in our top ten, Patch Lopper, fish in the lower lake. Oh. Make it. Make Davy excited. Yeah. Okay, you get some storms and some wind. Travel couldn't be not a whole lot of fun on a place. No. Goes, especially Lake no. Marion, yeah. <laughs> As we got to see this morning, Drew Cook is not scared any way, shape, or form to trench in on one for a long while. That first male and big female, that seven pounder, he locked in on that for about two hours before getting both of them to commit. Coming off 
31 pounds plus on day number one. Yeah. Got her, Anchored son. by this one right here. Got her. Good seven pounder that locked on right after he caught the mail. And pretty much been a big bite bait fighting frog, color tilapia magic. And one thing that Drew Cook did tell us after the weigh in yesterday, he has lived on the lower north end of Lake Marion all day so far today, but says he's got a few found that definitely might use on day number three that could be some protection from that wind. Hey guys, it's Drew Cook. We just got done weighing in uh, 31 13 from day one here at Santee Cooper. And, uh, you know, caught them all sight fishing off bed with a big bite fighting frog. My favorite way to do it, my favorite bait. Um, looking forward to getting back out there tomorrow. Hopefully the weather stays good and the females keep pushing up so we can have us a good event. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Moving day. Day two, Bassmaster Elite. Stop number three, Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite. Clarendon County, South Carolina, and that means the Santee Cooper Lakes. At the end of the day, you have to be in the top 47 if you want to fish on. Have a chance to go to Sunday, maybe. Five for the championship, Drew Cook been on top most of the day. Big day for him yesterday, exploding from below the top 10. Corey Johnston all the way up into second place. A big day for him, a big day for Clifford Perch. Pat Schlopper uh, just got a, another big one in the boat there. I understand for you, Suit. We will go now to our lead. Drew Cook. We're on track for the Century Bell. Lots of ground to cover between now and then. Check out to Drew Cook right now. He was I spy in one right before commercial break. Drew Cook live. That helps, cause. I can't believe it took that freaking long, dude. I got a two pounder. Four pounder, 314, 315 actually. Some love. I saw that thing the second day of practice. He was almost right on top of that one, Z. Yeah, and if you notice, he's on the outside edge of that lily pad field, so you're going to have to get a little bit closer, a yeah, little bit deeper water there for Drew Cook. And the other thing about this, Tommy, that yeah, you do see on Santee Cooper, the males are big, man. That's a big yeah, that's male. Yeah, four o'clock. Hey, you catch, you catch four males in one giant female like he's done. You are sitting on a on a really good bag. Mm. So that should give us. Like 22 something. That helps cause. You just called a 2 6 or 210? 210. He has been fun to watch do this today. Don't want to get in a hurry and not retire. We are. One bite away from where we need to be. We need a 25 pound average. 
Number one, I want one of them belts. Things look cool. I think that's what it's going to take to win, depending on the weather tomorrow. But I need to catch 25 today to, if I do stumble tomorrow, to make up for it. Old fighting frog bails me out again. By far the best bed fishing bait I've ever found. And as always, tilapia magic. Puts a little extra fire at the step there. We're back at it. Back at it. The kid is burning it down today. And it's really been two different approaches today, watching Drew Cook fishing on Marion, Greg Hackney also fishing on Lake Marion, up the lake. And if you really compare in your Mercury Dare to compare, Honestly. Hackney is not visibly looking at any of these fish that he's catching, but has told us there is no doubt in his mind they are spawning, but it's been all hardcover for Greg Hackney days one and two where the polar opposite, if you go down lake, the water's a little bit cleaner. Drew Cook has pretty much been all vegetation. So same sort of principle, but Hackney actually fishing for them, where Drew Cook looking for them and your Mercury dare to compare. So we're sort of, sort of same but different, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Got a nice blog sent in from Neil Paul, Visit Anderson Executive Director, hosted a great classic. He's uh, with Gerald Swindle. Quote, we just got paid. Now we can go to work, Swindle said, after catching a six-pounder. He started 11th, and he's back right in the teens. He had fallen. All right. Well, another thing for any young anglers that are watching this on Bassmaster Live, you watch Drew Cook and you watch Greg Hackney. They are meticulous about retying on this body of water. And there's a lot of gnarly stuff down there. We saw that yesterday with Carl Jockins. Absolutely. Notice Hackney is really bouncing around on colors, trying to get him fired again. Been a little bit of a painful afternoon as far as bites go. Yeah. And this was about, you always hear this time of year, the fish starting to, water heats up and the fish set up on a lot of the cypress trees in here. Got to see that with Carl quite a bit yesterday and David Mullins. Um, this was about the time yesterday where this body of water really, really fired. Right about this time, Caleb Kufall had a 25 minute span where he caught about 20 pounds of his weight. Eight four or six four and that a five four. One, one two. Yeah, yeah. right yes. around here. Yeah, and Suit, you're right about that. Kufal actually only had, at one o'clock yesterday, only had 13 pounds and called everything in 30 minutes. He's got four fish right now and he's in fourth place. He's got that six eight though. A couple two pounders, he needs that fifth fish for sure. Dude, I'm telling you, that tight, I've never seen them not be able to be caught anywhere across the country that tight. I got one right here looking at it, one like this looking at it, one like this looking at it. <sighs> this is fun. It's frustrating as crap, but it's fun. I mean, it's frustrating, but it is fun. And 
tank was about 27 pounds yesterday. Fifth place he started today. So I don't know what you do. That is so fun. Huh? As many times as I've been through there and hit one, hit one, hit one, hit one. I don't know, man. That's what I said. That's the fear of me leaving. I leave all it takes. Come on, babe. All I need is one of you. Right? The rest of you can stay. I just need one of you. One thing Hank Cherry said, he found some beds yesterday that had more than two on it, multiple bass, three, four at a time. I'm out of tricks. He must be, he must be bumping her. You can see she's just. Probably ruined my dang hook. Just put that hook on there. He didn't hurt it. I'm surprised. Well, he got a mouthful of bone. That must be the hardest head fish in fresh water. Grinnell, shoe pick. Bowfin, mudfish, whatever you would like to prefer. At my house, he's a shoe pick. He bit just like a bass, so. Just, I felt a little something, you know, I was like, I went re ease back up to check it, and it was just, I was like, yep, he got it. He didn't hurt run my hook. It's not in that cluster. See, I mean, that one big thing. And water's getting somewhere. warmer. Right here this morning, it's got to be on bed somewhere right here. At least I would think so. That's not it there either. One of the big similarities in a lot of the anglers that you watch today, and we talked about this yesterday and today, areas on Santee when they're spawning that you can get to Give the bank, at least where that bank is within sight. Those vast forests definitely have not been a major player.
just eat it, would you? Oh yes, Tommy Sanders. I know exactly what that music means, oh. and it's not dare to compare. No. I'll tell you what we're gonna do right oh. now is we are gonna take a look at our hummingbird unlock the lake a little bit more attention today down in Lake Moultrie. Interestingly enough, Tommy, two in our top 12 now in Lake Moultrie starting to rise a little bit. There's no doubt where they're biting in Lake Marion. No. It has been a bottom end beat down Utah Springs all the way across there to Potato Creek. It's been a party in there. Jack's Creek like the last time we were there. Man, fair to say though, up in the swamp, it has not gone down. That is your hummingbird unlock the lake of all fish catches here on day number two. Hummingbird unlock the lake, my friend. Fish moving. Hourly in and out of certain places, but uh, there have been some standby spots for sure so far. This day and three quarters of fishing. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Oh, Rapala fantasy fishing. What does that mean? I mean, fishing trips with the heroes of fishing. It means cash and prizes and all sorts of things. But best of all, as we always say, I need to get a chance to put a beating, to throw a beating on your friends, you know, and, and have bragging rights afterwards. It's uh, you can sign up, pick your team today, and play all season long, all the way to the end of the end of the road there in uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin, on the Upper Mississippi River. Okay. Why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you? You have you have thoroughly laid a beating on a one Ron Moore. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. Uh, back out of the water right now with Hank Jerry Bassmaster. You'll, you'll be back throwing wild punches soon enough. Hey, Yo, he will. Haymakers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one's a good. I don't know. There's one of them. That's a male. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> That's one. There's four more in there. <laughs> Back in the See what top I did? Ten. I had to tear a bait up to catch them. <laughs> Cut it down to. <sighs> makes <me> feel better. <laughs> I'm still sucking today, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> well, you know he is a gamer. You win. Back-to-back -back classics and still absolutely shaking like a leaf, catching a three-and-a-half pounder. <laughs> and the one, you know, the one thing about, we talked about it earlier, Hank Jerry did all of his damage, Tommy, yesterday in the first three hours of competition and was left alone. And I've kind of kept my eye on our maps. That area is getting a lot more pressure today than it did on day number one. In fact, there's probably a half dozen boats kind of in and out of those pockets that Hank Cherry utilized on day one, but a good one right there. Well needed fish number four for Hank Cherry.
They're saying that fish got him back in the top 10. The guy who started the day in the top 10 has fallen just outside our cut in 48. Masayuki Matsushita. Tough day for Mats Matsushita. Oh. And Patrick Walters is 40th. I'm not wow. going to chase you. That's a shocker. I'm going to make you eat it. Seriously. Well, I got one of them to bite. I just got the other one to bite and missed him. But what turned into what started out as two fish has turned into five fish. Well, now there's four fish. And I've never seen them be this tight. They all stay within a four foot circle. I've never seen them stay this tight and just not get the bait. The last one got the bait, not the one I caught, the one I missed got it good. It was out here before I ever knew he had it. But all I've done was just change my angle, trying to keep the sun off my shoulder. And I've pitched everything in the boat. And I took a critter hog, took all the appendages off of it, all the little squiggly things that make a lot of noise. And I, uh, all I've got basically now is just a piece of rubber with two little flaps. And like I said, I've had, I've had two of them bite it in the last, I don't know, 10 minutes. If I can get one more of what I'm looking at, it'll put me around 14. If I could put get two more, it'll put me up there in that where I really want to be. But I'm just going to keep, I'm not going to leave them. I'm going to keep pecking them because I know as soon as I do, Somebody's gonna come over there. I know that's what happened to my other area this morning. Uh, the boat came in fishing and started going straight to where all the beds were. So, I man, it's public lake, you gotta deal with it. I just, uh, I'm not nervous, but this is fun. This is like why I do this, I needed this. I mean, it's frustrating as it all get out. It is, but I mean, I'm married, got two kids, so I know what frustration's about. Not really, I love them more than anything on this planet. <laughs> I just need one more, and it's stupid to run because they're right here in front of me. They're literally, there's literally 20 pounds, 20 yards away from the boat that I can <laughs> physically see with my eyeballs. Tommy, I too am married with oh, two kids, you. and I'll tell you about frustration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. But I got him. Well, I'm a, I'm a jerk. Whether I got him or not, I don't know. Hank's a good dude. He's a 100% family man, and yeah. You can tell he's kind of just having fun today. Like he's a, he's a gamer, man. He's Absolutely. Competition Absolutely. Is, all, is everything to him. He said something at the class, classic to me that that so event, three that's all he cares about now. This is the classic. It's like these other events, sure, if he does well, great, but the classic. That's what I said, nah, we event. played that game. They heard me because I said, you give me one, I'll leave. You know that, they heard me. That's what it is. Well, you know when Drew Cook goes hovering willow, something's gonna happen. That's pretty good. Well, now I'm probably fishing tomorrow. Well, yeah, I'd have to be, that'd put me up 36 pound range. I can't believe that other one got it that fast and I missed him. You see when I jerked, my line was all the way out there? Crazy. I know my first stop will be in the morning.
Something to watch tomorrow with Greg Hackney. It has been a... I've been over something, man. I mean... It's weird. I mean, you thought he had the potential to go enormous today, and really after know. 9 o'clock, it has been painfully slow. Seemed like it made it better, you know. The, I guess the high, the highway department came down through there and cut all those cypress off. So that just filled the water full of stuff. Just didn't fill the water full of bass. Sir, Mr. Wow. Schlopper is at it again. A 7-3. He's up to almost 26 pounds. Yeah, second we'll place. This next grass clump. Wow. Got a 9-12 and a 7-3. Just got the photo of the 9-12 in a blog. Side by side with like his call fish. It's amazing if we can get it on, on screen here. I guess we'll see what you like that, tomorrow. don't you, Suge? I do. I like seeing the side by side of the size of the calls. I know you do. <laughs> Oh, Jew does it, everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Kind of seeing Polinick hooked up. Starting to see the rise of Lake Moultrie finally here today. A little, a little bigger than I thought he was. Which means one's over right over there, way bigger. That's four. Didn't... That's four. That's four. Not a pretty four, but it's four. Should get it just up under the the ten tenth spot there. Might maybe into the top ten. He was in that top six grouping three pounds ahead of the, the next set of anglers. Just making sure she wasn't gonna come back and be like, park it up. Sure, this is way too close for them to want to enjoy a boat ride, but okay. Carry on. All right, Paul, if you're looking at him, you know, with the weather coming tomorrow, I mean, at some point today, is everybody going to try their hand at, at sight fishing and catching them while they can today? Z, before before tomorrow, Suge? Oh, you know, it, Tommy, <laughs> not everybody, but most guys will. <laughs> Well, let's bring Dave Mercer uh -oh. in to join us now. It's time to check in with Dave as he's getting ready for the, uh, the way in and all the festivities coming up later. D Dave, is this thing unfolding about the way you thought it might? No, it never does. It never does. I mean, but guys, you were talking about weather, you know. We don't have to worry about weather just tomorrow. There is a line of storms headed this direction, and it looks like late in the way, and it, it may hit this area. So 
It's going to be an exciting last, you know, hour or so. And we, we talked about how different it is, you know, yesterday with that 3.30 and 5 o'clock check-in time, that wide gap. I mean, you're going to see some magic here, especially with this impending storm that's heading this way. And it's it's definitely here at the site. It feels like, you know, it's starting to brew. It's starting to get a little muggy here and the wind's picking up and you're seeing some dark clouds over my shoulder here. It, it kind of, you know, feels like some craziness can happen this afternoon. So not just for the sight fishing bite, but uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how that all pans out. Hey, Dave, real quick, we, we have got a bunch of messages and I got a bunch of buddies see. that saw when when Drew Cook bumped into a couple locals. No, number one, both boats were not uh -huh. wrong. No, Both boats were not wrong. Drew was short. He was not rude. Uh, he wasn't overly kind. But the other side is the guys that were out there, We you're going to bump into locals this time of year. It was just a very short exchange if you could tell the viewers at home that happens about every single hour on the bodies of water we go to this time of year it really does and i mean i will say this i think our anglers are head, held to a higher standard than any other sport i mean you search the internet and you can see videos where um People in the outfield at a baseball game will repeatedly ask a player a question and they just want him to raise like his right hand or his left hand and respond. And when they do, the entire stadium goes nuts. Our guys, you know, they've got a job to do and they are also put in weird situations too, not just where somebody's actually going to catch a fish that would have helped you, but there are situations where people want to help them and they run down to the end of the dock and they're like, hey, do you know where there is fish there? Well, they can't take that information. So they have to somehow say, I don't want that information and not sound rude. I mean, I think everything that professional anglers deal with throughout the day we can't give them enough credit for. I mean, not only are they dealing with all the locals and things going on on a public playing field, they're also hosting a fishing show. I mean, you you don't get Tiger Woods to talk during a golf tournament. I mean, people hold up a sign that says, shh, in this game, they're actually talking to the camera, going through their entire game plan, hosting a TV show, and trying to win a tournament, and also dealing with the locals. So I don't think a short exchange is is all that bad. I mean, a longer exchange could could possibly be worse, I guess. Dave, would it have been appropriate for Drew, if he had caught a big fish right after that encounter, to take a selfie just like they had yes, and then turn back yes, to them and sort of yes. you know, thumb his nose at him? Or something? Would that be appropriate? Yes. I mean, if you do it in a lighthearted way. <laughs> Well, there's always time for a selfie, Tommy. You know I'm a big fan I of the know. selfie. And it, it, I mean, here's the thing about our sport. Every tournament weigh-in, there is somebody standing there that's like, I tell you what, I was out there for just two hours this morning, and I would have won this thing hands down. If they would just put that is a every second way in. Yes. purple thread <laughs> in that skirt, it would be so, they're four feet askew of the honey hole. So they're oh, judged boy. by a different standard. I am staying out of this right now. <laughs> Watching Drew Cook live. Good stuff right there. Dave, Dave, I have to I have to rewind real quick because I, I know you love the event and the pageantry. Did you love the classic yes, with everybody the in the re arena? not knowing what the outcome was for that. Were you the one that possibly turned off Bass Track the last two hours from what we're hearing? I cannot confirm nor deny, but I mean, if I get the plug to that thing, I'm going to unplug it, guys. Actually, different idea. <laughs> I've been throwing this around with the anglers. I know you guys want everything to be accurate, and it helps the TV show and all that hoopla, yeah. but it really, really screws up the way. And so I know we do a $1,000 bonus weekly for the closest to Bass Track. I'm going to start giving $1,500 if the anglers just intentionally mess it up for the last two hours so we can have weigh-ins like that every go. single week. That now you're thinking. I'm prodding right now, Tommy, is what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to wreck business for the way. I love to be prodded. No. Again, Drew Cook set up on one really for about the last 20 minutes. Said he's about one big bite away from exactly where he wanted to be today, talking about his mental calculator of around 25 pounds.
like awkward, but I have no idea whether I'm on this show anymore or no, not. No, you're on. But you're I'll on, stand Dave. here awkwardly. <laughs> yeah, I uh, finally found another female, <clears throat> and she's been super close to biting like two or three times. The thing is, is like where the bed is, I can't see the actual bed. Um, I can just see around the bed and, and like whenever she gets really excited, I can see her tail sticking out from the pad. Um, every time that I've got her out to where I could see her, I've almost caught her. So I see her coming back in now. Um, I mean, she's so close to eating it right now. Now I can't see her. Oh, I see her now. And I'm assuming there's a male in there somewhere. I just I haven't seen the male. That's why I picked up this big fighting frog, the five inch fighting frog, because I don't want to accidentally catch the mail. Oh, yeah. What's going on there, Dave? The weigh-in's going to be good today, isn't it? Yeah. Big doings. Big things are going to happen in the next few hours. <laughs> Don't pay attention to Bass Track. It's going to be fireworks. <laughs> exactly right. Dave Mercer will be hosting the festivities. We're going to see some big fish. We're going to get some surprises. Remember, late catches have been the order of the day so far. And the one day we know of here on Santee Cooper this week. So we're likely to see anything happen. Who's going to be in the top 47? That's the big question. We will settle that today at weigh-in time. That starts about 3.30 Eastern here, but we got more fish in the meantime. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. About an hour and a half or so fishing time for our first flight, guys. Full Fields 94 out there fishing day number two of the guaranteed great bass week. Santee Cooper Lakes here. Depending on where they are, they may have much less time than that. We're talking about 100, 170,000 acres here, so uh, you, know, you could have some ma major travel time. Biggest, uh, biggest limit of the day we have seen unofficially 25, 15, almost 26 pounds by Pat Schlopper. Yes. Kind of coming out of nowhere, and Davey Height made the comment that. He really felt that Lake Moultrie was going to show up some way, shape, or form with the conditions that we've had today. And it looks like that actually is the case right now. Unofficially, two out of our top ten coming out of Lake Moultrie. So tomorrow should be interesting on FS1. That's Robert, the second year of this series. Competitor from Wisconsin, his best finish so far has been the 22nd at the Sabine River, which is... Uh, Size-wise, a very different proposition. Tommy, you'll find this interesting. Listen to Mercer. He was talking about that our sport's different than any other sport with fan interaction, stuff like that. Reminded me of an old story. I was at a Yankees-White Sox game in late April. Or I'm sorry, the late 80s, uh -huh. and wanted Don Mattingly's autograph, and he refused to. I was a little teenager. And I'm telling you, a fan was going to go after oh, him. <laughs> you know who that fan was, Tommy? It was my mom. I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh, I share a birthday with, with Mattingly. Come on now. I do. I do. I actually do. But I need that extra couple inches to see. so close to eat though I don't, I don't understand
Remember Brian New starting off with a six pound, 15 ounce fish at 8.30 this morning, four and a half hours later, yeah. he caught his second fish at 6.12. At least he's getting the right wow. size. Wow. Does that put him back in the cock? Uh, in 22nd, yeah, he was. Oh yeah. He started well inside there at yeah. the uh, 21st. You can't talk about the morning we got to experience with Greg Hackney. It was absolutely fantastic. The first hour coming off of a big, big day one stringer where he, like Drew Cook, Hank Cherry, backed off the throttle by about 11 or 12 o'clock. No doubt about it. Power pole replay of the day. This morning, it was early and often with Greg Hackney. And he was feeling it. I'm talking about in a mood. Strike King Rage Bug. 20-pound gamma line and his own signature series flipping stick. Getting it. I, I, wait. That, that was literally, that was the first five minutes of competition this morning. I spy and getting it done. Little 316 ounce weight. And here's the best way to put it, Tommy Sanders. After about 9.30, we have not seen Greg Hackney do much at all. And I promise he will need to make a big adjustment going into semifinal Saturday. Made the comment, I know I got enough to fish. We're going to get paid. Power pole replay today is really the first hour here on day number two, Santee Cooper Lakes. Greg Hackney, you are the power pole replay of the day, my friend. Say that again. Give us a little update for the day. Sucks right now. I don't know. I, I thought that deal down there in the end I would produce one or two, you know, good ones. I don't know. I didn't catch anything. A couple little rats jerk one out of the water, but I don't know. It don't seem like it seemed like I fished out of the fish. I, I got a couple bites back there in practice. Uh, it wasn't very fishy today, and God, the conditions were perfect. Cause that water's bumped up a little bit. Wind was blowing. It had a little color in it. So we're just gonna come back here where I started this morning and go the other way. Uh, I, I mean, I shut down on top of a wad of fish this morning, you know, and then we fished out of them. I spent a bunch of time on a stretch because yesterday all my big ones came from like right here back that way. I never fished this because I didn't need to. I was fishing this way, and when I got, you know, what I thought I needed, I, I, get the, I see my trail from yesterday where I turned and went right out there, and that's where I caught the last big one right there yesterday. This morning, you know, we worked them over on up here a little farther. I, I want to see if they're not on around the, the deal, too. I mean, the, the conditions that we have right now are typically when I can just get around them and they bite. You know what I mean, just drop the bait on them if you're, you know, but. You see a big fish, Z? <laughs> sure, Suge. <laughs> is a big one look how dark that fish is too that fish has been shallow a long time right there i believe that's pat schlopper is it not that's a seven pounder and here's the nine twelve <laughs> oh, oh. you like those calls don't you you're Sue? a differential freak aren't you yes he is <laughs> one of these things is not like the other that's my that favorite. is a great call right there only one other boat in his area that we're seeing down on moultrie Great day for Patch Lopper. Kind of 
making a big comeback today. That is a, as I said, that is a big call right there for Patch Lopper. Just caught another small one to get up to 26 pounds even. Oof. He's got a 214 is as small than the 3-0. He could he could get your big bag of the day. Yeah. Top I'm top. feeling it, man. Cook. He started like 13 pounds behind Drew Cook. He's cut it to 8-5. I think with the conditions that are coming, this is this derby is far from over with what's women in here. Boy, some nice bags coming in there. Josh Douglas, 19-6. Good for him. Good for AJ Josh. AJ Queen, 19 even. David Williams, 18-4. He had that seven pounder early. No, no. It's the bed that I'm fishing. As you can see, the pads all around it, and the bed's right up against these pads. And I can't see the female unless she's like out from the bed. Um, and a couple of times that she's been out from the bed, like I've, I've almost caught her. And then both the male and the female were up against the uh, the pads on the bed, and one of them bit it. And I mean. You can't not set the hook if, if you can't see, you know what I mean? If I could have seen it was the male, then I wouldn't have set the hook, you know, but. That sound right there is what we've heard all day long, all career long with Drew Cook when he finds one on a bed. How he works that soft plastic. Yeah, I'm blind shaking it because they're, I, I'm assuming they're up against these pads right here and I can't see them. And whenever I've done that before, if she was, she. I could her either either her tail would stick out and she would get super excited or she would actually spin around to where I can I can see her and uh, and then that's when she would get real fired up. I can see her tail now. Gosh. Come on. She nosed up on it. And it's a black bed, so the only time I can see her is whenever she's actually sideways, because I can see the, the white um, from her belly where that line is.
Cooks at his limit for a while. He's got one seven pounder. Everything else in there is just about four pounds or less. If he can get another giant in there, man, it's gonna be catch Drew Cook time. For anyone who wants that trophy, we'll be back. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. And by Rapala. Some of our anglers with less than an hour's fishing time, effectively. Such says, come on, let's let's hear a rally. Let's see a rally out there. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be yeah, some on, now. Going, on out, going on out there. That happened uh, yesterday to a large extent. We'll take a look at the St. Cooper Lakes here, Marion and Moultrie. Moultrie playing bigger today, as you pointed out, Marzona. Yes. And, uh, in fact, our biggest limit of the day, see, appears to come there, Pat Schlopper. No doubt. And I'd like to, like to get a look at Moultrie. Actually, just got a text. Yeah. Tommy Sanders from from a friend that's down there in an area called Blacks that last year we were taping a Zona show. Davey and I were down there and there was a local that was pinned up on a bed. Get ready for a cool story. And uh, we're going to slink out right now. I believe we're going to get out with Brandon Polinick. And we were egging him on. He was on camera and he hooks it and he bra he shatters his rod, right? And he melted down, Tommy. He lost it. Well, yeah. I, I couldn't take it, bud. I handed him my rod and said, best of luck. One of the nicest guys down there. Wow. But uh, evidently, he's on the water today is what we're hearing. Well, that's cool. With that rod? Yeah, I, he actually is. I just got a text. He's showing the rod off. Cool story. Brandon Polinick Live. Hey, hey, hey. Stop, stop, stop. In the mouth. Hmm. Okay, we got five. Not much for five, but we got five. Okay, not much. Not much, but it's honest work, right? <laughs> Yeah. We could go them all. Now two anglers just top 20 pounds. Steve Kennedy, seventh place with uh, 20 pounds, 13 ounces on Bass Track. And John Cox, the five pounds, oh, yeah. hit 20 pounds even. Yeah. Kind of feel like we'll end up having a way this tournament is setting up, how the fish are acting, that we'll probably some way, shape, or form be with John the next two days. Brandon took him even longer today to get his fifth fish than it did yesterday, but he is a survivor. He's, he's hanging in there, still in the top 10. Yeah. Yeah, Kufal still has four, and he's in fifth place. <laughs> Yeah, and it almost seems like real quick, Such. Kufal was fishing the most outer cypress trees, almost like the first trees a lot of those bigger pre-spawners get to. In fact, you're getting a good look at it right there in your bottom left-hand corner. It's almost like those bass have gotten past that. You know what I mean? Seeing a little bit of that today with, with some of the angle, uh, perfect case in point, Todd Auten, who was fishing outer trees, trees closest to the main lake. Kind of seems like that has definitely petered out today. So you can see really good and then nothing. <laughs> Jeez, terrible casting.
Uh, I'm definitely playing tricks on me. You know, one other one other similarity I'm gonna dare to compare again, uh -oh. Tommy, <laughs> is Greg Hackney and Carl Jockamson, they're not close, but they're not far from each other. They're pretty much in in the same vicinity. Boy, both of them after nine o'clock have just completely died off. Mm. I want to ask you a question, something you said Hackney told you, and, and we've heard Carl Jockinson say, he's got to have a hard edge back there. It can't be, mm -hmm. it, the, is that just a spawn thing? Because we go to There's lacrosse so sometimes and right you see guys yeah. getting like seemingly miles out there sometimes. Yeah, no, one of the difference there is you, those are a lot of the flats in a place like lacrosse or really a lot, a lot of, you know, you see it in the north or you see it in Florida is you'll have a hard bottom flat yeah. that it, 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 it's it's got the right environment way offshore it's just a little bit you could obviously tell in a tournament like this unless you have a lily pad field where those roots provide a lot of the you know the hard cover that they need to spawn on those fish want to be near a bank where that bottom is the hardest a lot of the the little pockets and creeks down by utah springs what makes those so good or where we've seen hank cherry those pockets, those man, you know, those little little man-made pockets and canals, they provide hard bottom right Hurricane. next to the shore. Very, very, almost identical to what you've seen with Greg Hackney. You've got to have something hard for them to spawn on. Now, now on the other side of that, I look forward to seeing Pat Schlopper tomorrow. The reason why I say that, Tommy, is I'm very familiar with the little pocket that he's done all his damage in, mm -hmm. and it's a hard bottom pocket. The whole thing is, just not the edge of it. Okay. It's not, what I'm saying is it's not silted, you know, where basically the rim, the shoreline of it is the only hard bottom. It's got a lot more hard bottom throughout the entire pocket. I'd really like to watch if he's caught them all through that tomorrow. You gotta think we'll be with him tomorrow. Up my dang light pole. Mm, mm, mm. I just seen one something swim by while I was jacking around with that. Well, you can sense a little frustration this afternoon with Hackney compared to this morning. Mm. It is a different, different demeanor, and I'm sure he is absolutely blown away that it completely, it just went away. Yeah, you need to get that limit in the boat. It's getting kind of late here, Cooch, to have four fish in the boat. I mean, I think that these guys will all do that. But less than an hour of time left in our coverage. We're going to get on it in a few minutes. Whoa! Yeah!
Look at the size of that bat. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Full field out there today, 94 anglers. For about half of that field, this is the fourth tournament in six weeks. I'm seeing that's a lot of work. Yes. I just the classic, and the classic is almost like two tournaments. When you think of all the long hours and lost sleep and all of that stuff. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. And well, you know what we kind of talked about yesterday? We were kind of guesstimating weights, taking a look at your unofficial top 10 there. And I'm going to say, going into semifinal Saturday, your top 10, you're still going to have to be hovering around that 41 pounds, which is pretty much exactly where it have been looking at it yesterday. That's your unofficial top 10 here on Santa Cooper Lakes. Just a healthy lead. Catches another giant. He's uh, going to really be stepping out there. Might need it tomorrow. Might need that cushion tomorrow. If the uh, uh, interferes with Tommy, this type of fishing. I think you're exactly right. I was thinking that. You know, we get storms that are predicted, really, really heavy winds. Don't get me wrong. He has other fish to go to in this event. He said that he's got in his back pocket. So this is a more of a burning down situation of the area of the lake marion that he's in but uh with the conditions that are coming he's trying to obviously stack as many chips as possible here when today I fish some of this i fished the outside edge of the pads you know i didn't matt airy just upgraded with a four pound six ounces so up down through there i got bit. tenth place he knocks uh todd otten out to a down to 11. Cook is looking right now, head on a swivel. Absolutely. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy caught. Luke Palmer just had a nice jump with a five and a half pounder. He's almost to 19 pounds, pushing him up to 16th place. That's good. Palmer had a good classic. Absolutely. Hartwell. I thought he was probably doing okay yesterday. It was 16-7. and Must have got on his good side. Blind on that side. God, I don't even know if he's going to help. Glad I didn't waste that much time on him. So skinny. The other ones are at least fat. Oh, that's pathetic. <laughs> not even a two pounder. He better not help. Sorry about that, buddy. Didn't even help me. Thought he was a lot bigger than that when I was looking at him. Wow, Jonathan Kelly, who was 85th, four for 815 yesterday, just joined the 20 pound club. He's up to 21-1, 38th place. Nice Bad. comeback today. Phoenix Bad. Rising, Z. Sorry. <laughs> Hit that uh -oh. one was just, he was super, super light. Phoenix Rising. I guess it made him made him look bigger. Jesse Takarante with a 18-14 day inside our cut from way down deep.
It's pretty much exactly what we got to see yesterday between 2 and 3 p.m. Eastern time. React really good to that bait. I think it's because the, the way the claws float, it's in the bottom so soft here. I think they can't they can't stand that. Got seven bags on bass track, topping 20 pounds today. We had 14 actual weight in over 20 pounds yesterday. Goes John running wide open. I'd like to like I've been fishing like hear what Hackney's talking about. The edge of the fishy part, so I was just, you know, before I run completely off, I was like, because this was not going on in practice, so I just feel like I need to hit a little bit of it here, and then uh, we're fixing to go out here and flip. I got some fish in, the, in that a line of trees out there I've not fished in the, during the tournament yet, so. And we got another area to go in. I just, you know, I got lots of stuff to do. I just need to light down on the right stretch. This water looks dirtier, I don't know, which I, I don't mind that. Might be that wind's blowing that water from the back, you know. It's just hard for me just to run around in here because I'm around a lot of fish right here, you know, and I'm like, I beat those up. I mean, I know what's wrong with them, but gotta be some more right here handy. Had slow done day everything for myself today that really that I wanted to you know I for sure wanted to fish so I can't I don't really have any complaints about that I mean it's not today's probably been the less fishing pressure I've been around the whole week between locals and uh, our guys slow day for Caleb Kufal Still sitting on four bass. You raise the possibility that those his fish may have left those outer trees. Just well, uh, you know, you know the other uh, Tommy. The other thing, and and this is you know, you get taught this from from the best on this lake. You wipe out a section of trees, you know, this time of year. It's not like, woo, hey, not they're really going to reload it's been tomorrow. It's a real slow day today. Um, got half the bites that I did yesterday, and uh, the majority of them weren't weren't the size. So just trying to get one more bite here. Got about a half an hour to fish, so I'm going to try to get one more to weigh in. Got four right now, so. See what happens. Yeah, that's the one thing that I learned with Davey and guys like Ken Ellis, who, you know, Ken Ellis is one of the best ever on this lake, is uh, when it comes to those outer cypress trees and isolated cypress trees, don't 
Don't think you can duplicate that for, for two or three days in a row. Caleb won last year at Gunnersville. He was in a place where he could make a circle. Just yeah, absolutely. Make it, make it for four days. And it, it held out for him. I'm wire to wire, second biggest yeah, elite margin of victory ever. Normal. And then all the rest of it. Luke Palmer's joined our 21 pound club. He just caught a five pounder after a 5 8 a little while ago. He's up to 21 4, 11th place. Can't tell if he ever came back or not. Dude, I don't even know where that thing came from. Came out of nowhere when I was hopping my bait out. Followed it. How much does this surprise you, Z? Patrick Walters, four fish today, six and a half pounds. Fall a lot. 45th place. <laughs> A lot, I would say, uh, and everybody else that has a, you know, the 85 percentile with a fantasy team, I would say them too. Yes. Dang it. How'd you sneak by me like that? means Tommy Sanders you ready for it yeah. how yep. about a marathon peak performance mm. has to be your day one leader and what we have seen him do and look it has not been easy today for Drew Cook but ones like this when you start off Seven. your second bite of the day is a solid seven pounder really you just need to cradle that with a nice quality limit he has done that Drew Cook has put on a performance today. He is as impressive as it gets when they are locked on beds. I spying them all day. One bait. Big bite fighting frog color tilapia magic. You just have to wonder what does he have left going into day three. A lot of the locals said that Potato Creek, it would last, it would certainly last one or two days. It has done that. Have to be going to be very interesting to see what happens in that general vicinity tomorrow because a lot of the big stringers, day one and days two, coming out of there, your marathon peak performance, it's pretty much been all day long since 9.53 a.m. Drew Cook, your marathon peak performance, very, very impressive day. We have him at 21.4 and probably just a hair more than that, but he's been weighing them and fairly, fairly honest with us today. Yeah, he's been the beneficiary of some of those big males. They, they, this place features some big yes. male bass. And yes. He has caught the best of them to fill out his limit, and thus he's over 20 pounds again. Drew Cook, Pat Schlopper, Corey Johnston still hanging in there. We'll probably be with him tomorrow as well, it looks like. The rest of them, that's more work to do and running out of town. We'll running out of time, rather. We'll be right back. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. About 45 minutes, the first flight is going to start checking in there at the John C. Land facility. We're in County, South Carolina. Hosts here for the, here for the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes. And about 3.30, we'll also uh, crank up the uh, proceedings and get things started heading toward the weigh-in beginning. Big weigh-in today and, of course, the big uh, story there. As we look at the top ten, unofficially right now, Drew Cook, yesterday's week, is still hanging in there. Big story is... Position 47, you've got to be 47th place or better. Look at some of the names just under that. I mean, right under it, John Cruz, Austin Felix, Scott Canterbury, 
uh, Chris Johnston, Seth Fighter, Kyle Welcher. These guys were picked by a lot of folks. Absolutely. Well there. And man, just, they're struggling. They're going to be fighting for their life the rest of the day today. What time they have left. Yeah, this has been a very hostile event as far as being on them. And then the next hour, you are not one of them who has struggled all day long today. Todd Auden still sitting on four fish. Well, <laughs> not a whole lot today. Um, we got the clouds and the wind a little bit late, I think. Um, it looked like most of the water that I fished yesterday, a lot of it cleared up. And that's kind of why I'm over here looking for some dirtier, dingier water. And, um, you know, in those trees I was on yesterday, those just getting hammered. Um, a lot of guys fishing the same stuff. And I, think, I just think that um, all the pressure was out today over there. You know, this fish just didn't want to bite. Not for me anyway, but um, I just been struggling all day. You know, my one little brush pile spot, I did catch some there, but uh, still wasn't the quality of fish that I was catching out of it during uh, yesterday. So, I mean, we just kind of fishing now. I mean, we found some little dingier water and just kind of searching around in here to see what we can get going. but. Like I say, it's a little bit too late, I think, for the, the wind and the everything, but um, we still got a chance to catch one one big one. That's what we're shooting for. You know, I think I got enough maybe to fish tomorrow and just hate to, hate to blow a, a good day with a bad day. Um, you know, we had one other three pounder on, it come off, it would have been a, Decent bag, but uh, not nothing like yesterday. So we're just gonna keep trying while we got a couple hours left and see what happens. Todd Otten, obviously in the, the the last flight today. If he's gonna get to fish till five, those anglers will have a have a good shot. And they've got uh, some good opportunities ahead. You would think. Yeah, and Tommy, one thing to, for us to definitely watch tomorrow, what we've seen really for, for and granted, there's a lot of bass spawning uh, that's obvious right now on Santee Cooper. But last year when I was down here, the, it was literally, it was like this week last year, I was with Patrick Walters one day. And in the morning, the first hour, it took a, it took quite a while to realize this, but there was a, also a shad spawn mixing with the same areas that a lot of these largemouth were spawning. And, and there, there's something eerily similar, man, that when you saw got to see Hackney out of the gate like that, Carl Jacobson out of the gate like that, just a flurry after flurry after flurry. That could happen. That, that could be starting right now. A lot of people think that that happens a lot later in the spring. But the way those fish acted early this morning was very shad spawny mm, behavior. Okay. Read in some of the comments uh, after yesterday's weigh-in from Drew Cook, he said there was a big carp spawn going on as well in yeah, that area yeah. he was fishing in, which uh, I mean, everything spawning. Muddy in his spot up, I think he said. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of made the water look like here's some business and then we're going to roll. Gerald Swindle started 11th, has just jumped into 10th place. A lot of his fish came this afternoon, starting with a six pounder at 1247. chance of having Cliff, Clifford Perch in our coverage tomorrow. Interesting yes. to see what he's doing. I got a feeling it'll look eerily similar to this. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto for Corey Johnston. And yeah. Pat yes. Clopper, probably. A little 
don't think guys that close. Drew Cook, uh, Corey Could've Johnston, over Clifford Perch. If, if they wouldn't have caught her. Kind of all in this region of the lake. It sounded like Drew Cook was setting up on that one. The fellows were snap facing. <laughs> I think that's what he honestly, what he just really? said. Yes. Why not? So what I'm looking at is, honestly, it's not like a very good looking bed, really and truly. It's kind of oblong and it's got two sandier spots than, than others. And the female, she just keeps doing like these circles and stuff. But whenever I've either been shaking it and she's come in there, she's acted interested. Or if uh, I leave it in there and then I see her and shake it, you know, she rolls on it like she's like really close to biting it. Um, so I'm either leaving it in there until I see her and then I'm shaking it or I'm, uh, like if I see her just sitting over there looking, I'll shake it and, uh, and she'll come out there and, and look at it. But this is the, I'm assuming this is the fish that, uh, old boys caught a little while ago because I've seen her open her mouth up a couple times like she'd been hooked so I mean if it if that wasn't the case I believe I'd have caught her on the first flip but it is what it is now and it's 251 so we got about 30 minutes and uh, I mean this would be a, obviously a nice addition to the bag <laughs> it would be a good call I just wish we could have got that other one back there to go to, that female. She was a really nice one. She's fat. If I could see better, it would. I see her. I see something. One of them swimming up now. Well, we'll get a good look at how, get the size of that real quick. Looks like it's a, said it'd be a good addition. Now, I'm going to go with. Looks like a solid six, six yeah, six and a quarter ish. Yeah. There we go. Oh man. <laughs> well, it, it it gives the viewer a gauge of how, how big of one he's fishing for. Yeah, I mean that's we rarely get that opportunity. <laughs> what a bizarre day. Oh. Now seriously, Mark Zoe, you've been in this position before. You've been catching them in a tournament looking at them the next day you get up stick your head out the door and those flags are snapping and there's a little rumbling on the horizon what what, what do you think what's the first thing you think you're going to do Ugh. <laughs> 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 I, you, you know I, it, it's look drew and his roommate drew benton they will push this and it's obvious that and it's what they do it's where they grew up you know in south georgia and northern florida I guarantee you that Drew Cook will get, you know, we're going to have, it looks like south, southwest winds. Somewhere I'm sure Drew probably has checked areas for that direction wind. Um, and he'll do everything he could to still look at them, but he's going to have to do a lot. Of, I, I, I think a lot of oh, gosh, I blind sight fishing mm -hmm. like we've seen Hackney do today. Right. You know, yeah. I, I, Kufal, yeah, same thing. Speaking of Benton, he had a seven pounder around two o'clock. He's 19th place right now, 1710, about what he had yesterday. I see him now. 
and and look, the, Tommy, we've we've talked about this for many many years. Yeah, a lot of the sight fishing events that you and I have covered, for the most part, four days of sight fishing does not work. No. no. Yeah, granted, granted, it did here when when Preston Clark won. But a lot of the sight fishing tournaments are very top heavy. They're the first two days of the, the event, and then you yeah, right. you have to you have to protect those giant stringers. And he's going to have another really big bag today. Um, but that's for eighty percent of the sight fishing tournaments that we've covered together. Somewhere in there, you have to fish for one of the days. Good point. You know, I think we'll probably, if the conditions warrant, you'll probably see him keep a swim jig honest in, in, in areas like this where you're, you know, you're right. hoping you run it over one's bed. And the one thing we said coming into this tournament, we opened the first hour. This was going to be a, an event especially with the conditions, an event of change. Whether it's a, <laughs> there's waves coming up or waves that have been depleted the first two days of this tournament, but no doubt about it, what we're going to see tomorrow is guys technique-wise that are going to have to switch up from what we've been able to see at least so far the first two days. Well, there's a way it lays out unofficially, as always, until the weigh-in, which begins not too long from now, about 30 minutes. We start the festivities right here on Bassmaster.com. We cook, we cook in oh. A lot of fellows have risen up from below the top 10 today to get in there. John Cox, Carol Swindle among them, Steve Kennedy, Cliff Birch, Clifford Birch, Corey Johnston, and Pat Schlopper. In fact, we've replaced more than half of the top 10 during the course of this day, which is not unexpected at all. Yeah, and the one real story that was in that top 10, Tommy, was a lot of those guys have been fishing within eyesight of each other. You're going to see some audibles called on semifinal Saturday, no doubt about it. There was a lot of cannibalizing on the bottom end of Lake Marion today. Yep. Weigh-in starts again at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com. And you decide who gets to fish tomorrow, fish tomorrow for 12 spots, excuse me, 10 spots on Championship Sunday. Well, that was almost a screw up there. Hang on, make it one more day. Maybe figure out something, as you say, Mark Jones, different tomorrow. Still, man, even a lot of these areas that have been throttled the first two days of this tournament, it is a fun lake to call an event on. You never know what's around the corner. All right. A little bit. And we are looking, as of yeah. now, it looks like we're going to be able to slip down in Moultrie for our first look this tournament. Well, that's going to be fun. We look forward to that. Tomorrow morning, we will see you at 8 Thank Eastern you. time on FS1, <laughs> Fox Sports 1, and the Fox Sports app. And we look forward to you. See you tomorrow morning.